to record. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Open Revealers Dialogue. And today our subject is Hyperborea, Beyond the Holographic Universe. So I'm going to um, go ahead and pass this on to Betsy, and Pat Betsy will go ahead and tell us all about our subject today. I want to just start with um, and let everybody know how we kind of got to where we are. Um, and I do see the question, uh, a definition for hyperborea. Um, that's fine. That's fine. We won't. We won't pass that up. I just want to explain how we, how w the five of us kind of got to this because sometimes. Um, your spirit and source just takes you places where you don't really know you're going to go. And I know some of you guys have heard me talk about this before, but last year when we saw the giant tree video, um, that video in itself um, pushed our awareness and our consciousness to expand really far. And, you know, I always say we went from here to zoomed out here. And a lot of times when your awareness is, is pushed to a certain limit, you do have that feeling of insanity. We're like, holy, how do I process this? How do I, how do I deal with this? And then eventually, you know, it, it kind of sinks in. It may take a while. So... It was a few months ago, and Milos brought up um, Busegi, and I know that's not how you say it. I do believe the Romanians say it, Bucig, um, but we, we've just been saying Busegi. So uh, Milos brought that up, and we, we, we kind of looked at it, and it was like, it was really cool. We talked about it for a little bit, what they found inside the mountain, how Cesar was able to get through you know, that whole nine yards. And at that time, our focus was we were going to Antarctica. We were going to go figure out what was in Antarctica. And um, we needed coats and boots and socks and underwear. And we were there. Russia had a two-month training mission. And so our focus was sort of <laughs> – we, we get around with each other. And, you know, Milos was saying, oh, man, we have to get the Powerball to have that kind of money. I even went and bought a Powerball ticket so that the five of us could go to Antarctica and see for ourselves just what the hell was going on. Okay. So it was there. That, I mean, Milos had already shared that information, but we kind of put our focus on, you know, we're going to Antarctica. So – but spirit really works in strange ways because there's a lot of times when you just get drop kicked into the right direction instead of the wrong direction. So I was listening to Og's video when Og, when you were outside, <clears throat> you were recording and you brought up Usagi Mountain. And something something inside just clicked wide open. And it was like being on a bicycle, going downhill at a 90 degree angle with no shoes on and you got no way to stop yourself. I mean, it was like a roller coaster, like being punched in the gut and your breath just being taken right out of you. So, I mean, we had to call an emergency admin meeting in the whole nine yards because oh my god this is this is huge this is huge so it kind of was like the uh the russian tree video with the giant trees it kind of pushed my consciousness and my awareness to another whole another whole thing so understanding that we don't know that much about the Hyperboreans, um, but it was vitally important, and then it just sort of like snowballed from there. So um, when 
when Trudy and Lily and I were in Mexico together, we explored this on our own, just through spirit, just through awakening of our, our DNA and, and coming up with things. And I understand that there's people in the audience right now who have much more information than than we do because this is this is this is new to us so um that's how we sort of got onto this subject it was like i personally felt like i was literally pushed into this and we've had moments in the last couple of weeks or so since we've been in mexico where we actually feel like we're going a little insane so um I just wanted to give you an introduction about how we came to this and then when we brought it up in ESG and then everybody just exploded. You know, I mean everybody was just interested in in this in this subject. So we've been doing some homework but we don't have the information that some of you guys like Felicia and Morella and that it, it's in your in your history. Um, I'm going to leave it at that, but if um, somebody asked, the very first question was um, a definition or an explanation of Hyperboreans. I don't know, Felicia, do you wanna, Felicia, do you wanna take that on? Do you wanna explain Hyperborea? I'm just gonna add before, Felicia, oh. before you go on, I'm just gonna add that would become evident, I think, especially when, when Betsy and Trudy was here with me, what became evident is that hyperborea is a huge part of this whole unraveling situation, unraveling of humanity that we are going through. And so we as a group sort of, uh, we, uh, I, we always joke that we are investigators and, you know, we're just trying to put things together and connect dots so it becomes evident that go over there to that drawer where the um reggie the can you mute yourself please God. so what we would become evident is that this subject has to be discussed publicly because it is part of this unraveling process that we are going through right now Without going into this subject, we don't know a full human history because this is a huge part of human history. So that's why we're today touching on it. Right, it, it's my, it, and I'll let Felicia take over in a minute. It's just my understanding that the Hyperboreans themselves were the initial, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, this is just material that I've read. They were the initial creation create created beings from the planet that were actually pure spirit pure source energy and they were hyperborea was more around the north pole etc but felicia i'll go ahead and let you take over um it just give us a little definition if you want if you would please well you said it perfectly uh, that the, the, they have been able to exist in pure beingness, and that's what our country is anchored in. The energetic signature of Romania is um, the ground of being or beingness itself. And uh, so uh, to put them in a time frame concept or in a, in a linear time is um, not the way to approach the subject because um, uh, they are, they exist in simultaneity of being. And the, I, I was trying to come up with a very simple uh, childlike explanation. What does it mean to be in simultaneity of being? Because it's a kind of a technical term. Um, it sounds technical, but it's really, really simple. And I did this exercise for my friends about three or four years ago, and they asked me, what does it mean? And I encourage uh, uh, you, you to do it if you want to get to the bottom of it. 
is let's say if you took uh, like uh, several circles and cut them out of plastic, like let's say like 10 circles, and then write on each circle with a marker, whatever comes to your mind, it doesn't matter, parts of your life, about the matrix, whatever story you want to write, yeah? And then, um, then pile them up on top of each other and remember they are transparent. Okay, and so um, because when we move our our spirit moves into a spiral and the the our spirit extracts the uh, pure essence of our soul experience in here. It's all about our experience. So when you start rotating those, you're going to read the story in many 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 ways because it goes like this multidimensionally and simultaneous, simultaneity of being, weaving in all holograms that, are, that have ever been in existence. And then every time you stop it, you're going to have a different perspective from which your spirit is viewing or extracting more essence and expanding. So this is what the, the best way for me to explain the Hyperboreans and how their experience is, is very rich, it's all encompassing. And it's not in time and it's not in space. That's what beyond the hologram means to us. So I will leave it there and you know, we can talk about this subject. I think Lily is uh, right. This is a subject that is going to unravel for years to come. This is just like we're starting right now. And, and uh, um, we are here in response to your requests as you come along because you prompt you know, the answers from us. And you also have the answers because everybody, every single soul docks into the holographic library. You all go there. That you cannot yes. not go there. <laughs> That's where you weave your reality, you know what I mean? So, and the libraries, they open according to your perspective and what you wish to explore from what angle. So that's where you're docked in. There you go. <laughs> yes, my, oh, go ahead, Lily. Go ahead. This well, is very important because we talk. Oh, go ahead. I'm no, go ahead. We, we all, we are, that's our beingness. That's how our beingness uh, 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 unfold. So I'm not the only Hyperborean. It just means that we remember it more. That's all. You're all Hyperborean. <laughs> because that's the original DNA. And so without, exactly. you know, if you, if we want to dig into who, true human being is, and we've talked about this, and we talked about what more, probably getting close to two years now, we talked about activating original DNA. That's the original DNA. That's the living creator being, multidimensional, all that it is with access to all possibilities in reality. That's creator being. So that's who we are. And this is, I think, the biggest secret is that because once we and this subject is so sort of tightly guarded is because once we figure that out, who we truly are, then uh, we are limitless. As humanity, we are limitless because we know that we have as creator being access to our greater being right here, right now within our body because that's our original DNA. That's the way I look at it, because I, I know that it's genetic for me. So like you said, Felicia, it is, we are hyperboreans. This is genetic, all the memories and this out of time, Akashic living record that exists. I, I have been showing that record, how it works and all of that stuff when I was about 13. And that's, that's the record you just, you can go at any point because it's out of time. And that's the DNA, the original DNA. That's where it yeah. is. 
That's where it's originated. Exactly, and there isn't such a thing as a race that started the human race. There is no beginning and no end. It's a forever unfolding. So to say that there is one race that started the race or the life somewhere, that's mine. <laughs> That's more separation. It's just the origins of us. That's very different. It's not yeah. that there is a privileged race, you know, yes. that there is an origin for us as, as human beings here. And, and I also a lot of times say, hey, you know, um, we got to be natives here too somehow. So I guess this is what <laughs> what's going on. To me, that's that's my family. That's my ancient family. This is part of human race. We are, I've been talking about this for years now. We are the creator beings. We are in wholeness here. We represent the universe wholeness right here on this plane of existence. For me, um, it was sort of important to really dig into this because um, Lily has a lot of history, her background history from her parents and where she came from. I don't have that. Um, my family never really delved, you know, really brought any of that up. I know that my father was Italian and German and <clears throat> my mother was more Austrian and the Slavic, Croatian, Romania, those kind of countries over there, Czechoslovakia. That's all I know. That's all I knew. So for me to take it to take it as let's say a starting point. So Felicia, I understand what you're saying that there. But let's just for me to in order to come to put the two together. Okay, as far as having a starting point to figure out who is Betsy, to realize that the Hyperboreans were a race of people that actually um, migrated down, you know, and, and actually, you know, combined with other races and stuff. This was very important to me because it gave me a point with, like Lily said, this is our original DNA. So it, it gave me a way to connect, connect a creator being with original DNA. So I feel like Lily does, that these are my ancestors. And it was important for me to, to have that, to have that starting point um, for me to look into. I, does that make sense? Anyone? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Makes sense to me, you know, so. Yeah, it does, Betsy, because like, we always talk about going within and for me, um, when we started looking at Hyperborea, it really made me look at myself and like, and how as the process of us digging deeper into the third strand DNA, the, um, the original, all these different things, it has to do with our own bodies and returning back to that. And the more we look, the more we, the more we looked into that, the more we found out that we can actually um, we can actually do this like physically so it's uh but it takes a lot of work <laughs> it's not just something you can slough off and just say oh well whatever i can't do that but you can if you want to so it's um it's like you can look you can dig into it if you want to so it's really really interesting how the more we look into these subjects and where we're actually looking within ourselves. And the, the fact that what they found, uh, the record, the whole of records, I guess, for the, the living library in, it was, it was Mount, Mountain. Um, that just, for me, it confirmed a lot of things. It, it was like, a lot of it was huge confirmation. So um, that's what it did to me the most, is give me this huge confirmation that, that we are 
their original human beings and that that record actually does exist and all of that stuff. So that, for me, it was a, a beautiful news, so to speak. What we were working on too when we were in Mexico is um, we kind of looked into uh, what was found in the Hall of Records and stuff, and um, we 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 actually found within ourselves that there's two actual sets of Akashic records, according to what we were digging into, and um, there is an Akashic record that's inverted and twisted and it's of the matrix but the true akashic record is sort of like inner earth or and that it can't be touched and that inner earth really is <clears throat> it's actually when they were talking about the tunnels and aug you were mentioning about how when they went down and the time gets slower as you go down it actually makes a whole lot of sense that the time, time that we see that exists on the surface here when the true point of no time would be the inner earth or the actual access of the Akashic records. And, um, I know what I'm trying to say, but it's not coming out right. But, um, but we did discover, or we did feel that there was two different sets of Akashic records and a lot of people who claim that they do um, delve into or can see into the Akashic records here on the planet are actually not looking at the right one because you have to go within to actually see the truth of that. Um, uh, do you want to, can you explain what, um, what you went through, what you, you mentioned a little bit in your video, which I found totally fascinating, but, um, could you share with us what, what happened when you were at Busegi, Bucheg, <laughs> however you say it, please. Yeah, I've been doing a, uh, is my mic okay? It's an external, got to set up weird. Okay. Is the audio okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, cool. I don't want to, to fuzz out. I've been making a, a mind map here. I'll probably post it so everybody can look at it. Um, everybody has, you know, the general outline of what's gone on. The ideas here, basically like the chapters to the, the uh, fairly complex story. I feel like what you were trying to say before is that Earth is a trans. Uh, the Earth is a layer of a larger universe, and the entire universe is trans-dimensional in format. And so, if you go, you know, to your neighbor's house, it's not going to be eight o'clock when you came from twelve o'clock. But if you go with the different layer, if parts of the Earth are different layers because of the frequency or the way it's set up, it might be a different time period of history. Or in this way, just a different uh, rate of acceleration for our perception of time. And then, if you have a species or a civilization that's been been there for you know for five thousand, five hundred million years, whatever, and then we've been over here for twenty thousand. There's going to be a drastic difference when one goes to the other. It's going to be like you know entering a different universe. But the interesting part is that we're on the same planet. We're on the same literal collective you know environment here. It's just very complex how it all works, and that connects to our DNA because our DNA is basically going to format us to a particular environment and time. And then this kind of relates to uh, certain situations that have played out regarding, um, somebody's unmuted. It's a little distracting. I don't know who, and I'm hearing the, the my voice. My back. Back. Manuel, can you mute honey, please? Uh, thank you. That did it. I think that did it. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. It's, it's really weird. There's a, funny thing you can do with the audio uh, voice loop back where you start to babble because if the, there's an immediate loop it's something like audio technicians um so hyperborea um the main thing at least that uh jumps out here is that there are uh, regardless of how it's an underground area if that has to do with these you know crystal mountains or r related to maybe just being a certain distance away from uh what we call you know waking society and p 
people that have been here for tens of thousands of years in our civilization and then another civilization where it's, you know, 500,000 to millions of years, if that alone causes a different type of neural, like net of, of uh, consciousness, uh, energy, basically, something, whatever the format is, or if it's different planes somehow, however it's set up, because they draw, they draw this in the ancient uh, religions as a big domed map with like different inner and outer layers and basically the earth to them is the universe which might be more accurate than us looking out like that's the answers out there when it's really like all those layers are complexified in in where we're at regardless there and possibly in other areas and namely basically just look at a map of america and around the world where you see these even the cern device but where you see these underground bases and military bases and then you, you overlay that with like an old Native American map or a lore, you know, type map and all the weird stuff goes on where all the bases are. And so there are these vortex areas, these energies, uh, vortex energy areas, and Antarctica is a big one, where the way it was explained and shown is that if we have those layers of multiple realities or times, which then goes back to how they're in simultaneity, and I think Felicia talked about that, and that was basically, that's like the beginning of trying to understand whatever it is, if you have, uh, I don't know, like a, uh, something with, I can't think of the word. There's like a toy or something that looks like that, or it's almost like a maple. Um, but that's also connected to it. It's actually an ancient representation of some, some with the dimensions and raising energy. But if you have something spinning around kind of like a fan and balls on, on a string or something spinning around, each one on the outside is experiencing its own version of the moment as it goes around. But in the center, all of them are connected and happening simultane simultaneously or simultaneously. So if we have access to that center vortex point, and at that point we're literally seeing all the extrapolations of what happens to spin around on the end, then all of it is happening from the person in the center, like a merry-go-round, merry-go-round. They see it all happening at once, or like those uh, UFO rides at the fair where you stick to the wall. The guy in the center, I mean, he's also not spinning, but uh. If you're perfectly in the center, you get dizzy, but you wouldn't fly off to the wall. That's the whole point. So we're out here millions of years, probably not millions of years, but I'm sure stuff like that has happened on, in this realm. But at least we, we have 2,000 years, 3,000 years, but apparently there's way longer. There's been hundreds of thousands of years of our history, but there's been resets and mind wipes and all types of weird stuff. But we're out here, you know, experiencing thousands of thousands of years. And for us, it's kind of like we can't live that long, so we can't get it all in one. If we were in the center where it wasn't pulling us around, but equally in all directions, then we would have access to more and more time at once. And all the center means is about both the realm with these energy vortexes, which if there's layers, like I was beginning to say, and basically there's frequencies kind of like a, a soup or something, a sea, and you have a vortex forming where it goes down through them. The vortex that forms is going to be the same it's going to produce an indent, if you will, or an influence that connects one layer to another. So then that would be the way that the different layers connect. So if you have a vortex in your room going this way and there's multiple versions of Earth, then each version has that vortex and can communicate through it. So if we have a central one on the planet, this would be the place where all the other various realms, time, civilizations actually converge around. And so for us, I don't think we could actually experience it until, uh, I distracted myself, but basically it has to do with DNA. I'll skip what I was going to say before. Um, damn, what was I going to say? But basically it comes down to DNA because, uh, like I was saying with the time effect of going further, further into the, uh, the base, basically there's a military base down there. There's a whole story behind that, how the military wanted to take over. Um, and they did and the secret societies made that happen and Romania wanted to uh, go for the unveiling, which is what's happening now. However, that's going to work out. But basically, uh, the, the beings there, uh, well, the energy is um, connected through those points or whatever that means. However, that plays out, I guess, higher dimensional physics, whatever. We, we really don't really have public sciences for that. But it's the DNA as well. Because imagine being in the center where everything that's happening in history over you know many thousands of years is happening all at once. Our consciousness wouldn't be able to understand it or comprehend it. We'd get weighed down. We get we'd be we'd have too much baggage that we'd end up getting splayed out to the sides, like in that UFO uh, ride at the fair, and we'd stick to the walls. But if we were not ready, we'd like split up and stick into different walls at different times, and our consciousness wouldn't be quite full in either of them. 
And that kind of goes back to uh, what is called the Akashic rec Records, the uh, Halls of Amenti and the Sphere of Amenti and how, I'm just gonna run through this real quick, which I'm, like half, I'm primarily done. Um, basically there was these attempts at modifying the civilization that we know now, the DNA, so that they wouldn't be able to comprehend in order to know what's going on. It's basically as simple as that. And all that has to do is tr with this trauma. If you carry the trauma of the ego mind, then that holds on to that type of out, it holds onto the wall of the particular environment that you're in. So if you try to go to the center, it has more gravity, more weight, and one person gets stuck back to the wall. When we let go of trauma, we don't have that holding us back. We can float, if you will, break the escape velocity of gravity that's trying to put us in that external time period. And we can go through these vortexes or exist in these vortex areas, and it doesn't you know, mess stuff up. If that DNA isn't clean, it causes, what I was beginning to talk about in the, the other video, I think Felicia brought up, where um, there's a mutation that happens. And that's what was happening to these, what, what, we, what are now the rulers of this society. They, they began to mutate because they went with uh, Lucifer, sons of Rebe uh, Lucifer Rebellion, sons of Bilal, plan to take over the world through misery and, and depravity and the uh, isolation, desolation of ice, uh, excuse me, I can't even think of that, that extremely easy to remember term. There's an abomination of desolation. Um, there was basically just a plan when everything was all lovely and dovey that mm, we can just poison people and just come up with wars and reasons to this and then take over the whole world. And so they did that, but they got, they ended up getting kicked out and they got kicked out and their DNA was marked so that they wouldn't be able to come back, at least not without first having to clean themselves or obtain permission. And that's where, from what we understand, the Hyperboreans, as far as the Guardian aspects, come into play. They were there for the 2000. 10 experience, but nobody can see them because they're removed from all our abilities. The only thing we can do is feel them. And then the people that are like the sons of Allah, Lucifer, they have technology and the people that, you know, come from wherever this place is can trick their technology. They can go around, they can shut it all off. They can just take it and ball it up and throw it in the trash. And so they, those, those are the only beings that I've seen that they, these people fear. And these people feed on people as well. Um, but that was the reason why they basically got kicked out. They got kicked out, and uh, and as well, the pathway back, one has to shed off all the karma or this ego entanglement. It's, it's physics, it's philosophy, it's like emotional therapy about why the DNA tends to carry this type of heavier energy. Imagine it's just weight, and if you, and it's imbalanced. I always go through this, I don't know, I always go through this, um, metaphor if you have a geometric shape and it's weighted on all ends and it has to accelerate to a certain degree before it can pass through the vortex or end up in a certain area if that's your ego your mind and your spirit or any you know combination and one is out balance out of balance it ends up uh distorting if you're spinning it and say it has to get up to a certain speed then it'll break apart before it gets to a speed where as if it's imbalanced it'll break but if it's equal if it's proportional it'll expand and when it expands correspondingly proportionally whatever you want to call it it then meets all of the sides or all of the the uh it encompasses the whole of what is happening and consciousness expands and we actually like we i don't know there's like a weird uh experience your mind expands you can see all the time at once it's dna activation and so there was a whole big plan where they wanted to mutate people to create an army to invade Hyperborea to take over. And that was the whole ancient battle of the heavens and wanting to invade the, I can't remember the word, these, not Avalon, but these layers like right below the, the highest uh, realms. And, and that's basically what we're looking at now. And apparently it's like the end of it now. And apparently the one where there was like a huge satanic takeover and the super soldiers rose from the bases and attacked, that was literally the last timeline of goes uh, the other layer and um, they did whatever they did there, but it's apparently impossible in any way for them to actually breach the the area because you can't you can't do it by proxy. You can't do it. Um, I mean, you can't astral project there. You can't do it in any way that is getting past the the gate system, whereby your consciousness has to not have the energy that holds one back and fear, aggression, all that stuff holds a person back. It doesn't. It's literally trying to fit through a, a, a narrow passageway. And it doesn't work. And that's actually one of the, the terms for it. Um, before I rant anymore, anymore, there are bases. Patty Broussard actually talked about this. This is what I was told of. And this is what I've seen one or two. I'll, I'll end this real quick. I'll wrap this up real quick. 
there are, I think, three bases that are genetically secured, meaning no one who carries the genetic distortions of this area can access these bases. And the mil there's, it's a big split. The militaries of the world know this. Some people have people inside the bases, and some parts of the, the military are like, let's blow up the world, destroy everything, so we can't do what we want to do. And they're consistently trying to break into the bases. That has to do with the or organic robotoids, the cyborgs, the, the AI goop parasite that is they're trying to infect it. In these areas connected to these underground bases or something like that, whether it's Antarctica, uh, Area 51, Buche Buchechi, or Buchechi, Buchechi, excuse me. Um, we went through a whole big spiel that today, how to really pronounce it. Um, is that these bases contain the holographic memories and the scalar wave emission devices that can literally, they looked, they apparently they said, and we watched it too, we've seen it. I don't know, I really, it's hard to describe. It's like seeing a hologram where you're inside it and then thousands of years of stuff. They're collective consciousness recordings, uh, computer system, holographic computer system. So you, you, it connects to a scalar mind link and then you experience it. Um, and apparently these have mapped out not evolution, but spiritual progression for civilizations over hundreds of thousands of years. And so they're like command and control centers for people learning about life in the universe and, and existence. And that's basically the very most basic idea and outline of it. Um, and a little bit of the... Basically, uh, so, so basically we are going into our own DNA and that's, that's the, the living holographic record then. Right. Well, like, like Felicia said, um, what was the first thing she said? Uh, I guess, oh, well, uh, how, uh, dang, excuse my language. But because um, we're all, people pass through that area, that vortex system, basically to get here. It's like it's a progenitor system. And they made a fake one. And that's also connected to the Akashic, um, like the false memory system which is basically they're trying to make a replicated version of heaven and earth and all that so that they can live inside it and rule over everyone which is literally like an alternate dimension and it messes up all the time and breaks in half and they have to like scurry over to the other side and it doesn't really work it's impossible you have to actually want to care you have to do it out of love because you love your creation you can't just do it because you want to rape and molest everybody it doesn't work that way it's too too much to keep up and they're over there trying to like just pay people to keep it up like yeah you do that and handle that and kill off all them if they get and that over hundreds of thousands of millions of years, they, they're literally throwing, wanting to throw in the towel. And they're the ones that have everything made for them. They don't have to do anything. It's the easy job. So it flips on them. It bites them. In the, it's just like ego. How it turns around, the, you know, the bully becomes oppressed by his, his own you know, self-loathing attitude because he didn't respect anybody enough in the world. And same situation. I didn't want to believe it, but it's more or less what it is. It doesn't mean they're going to literally give up, but that's what's happening. They're degrading and distorting faster and faster than they need to, uh, they came out to the point where there's like a time limit where they have to allow people to um, activate and know the truth. Otherwise, the whole, basically the whole show, it gets taken out of their hands because right now they're abusing technology, which is, it's just, it, it's, if it were to be allowed to continue, it would throw the whole spectrum off and it would basically ruin this area for further ventures for people who want to learn. And so if they let it get to a certain point where progress goes down to close enough to zero, the other beings step in and they take all their technology and put them in a you know a certain area where they can't do anything. And that happened in between every civilization reset where they would get tossed into a pit, which is just an alternate dimension where they're, they're lost souls. They can't do anything. They can't interact. They can't get into a body. They can't do anything. And they've waited every time they develop those systems that in between the resets, these computer systems harbor their DNA and basically go out and mix it with animals and recreate a human-like form that they can come out and you know rule over people again. And the, in order to not cheat, more or less, and ruin the experience for humans, nobody came out and was like, oh, humans, don't trust them. They're just going to do the same thing over again. Like, we have to learn on our own, more, more or less, and basically take the power back from them. Otherwise, we don't ever get it back. Because the yeah. truth is, we did have it to begin with. Oh. And that goes back to the, uh, the DNA is the ultimate holographic recording system. It's the internet for that. We're all connected to it. Anybody can go in and access it. But you have to use these codes, if you will, that unfold in a way that produce uh it's like you don't i don't it's hard to describe it could take a whole you know few hours to describe that but it's basically you have to go into it not asking for stuff materialistically so you can have power over others and in learning how to do that you you shed karma and you, you begin to access these layers go ahead Roy. Uh, i appreciate uh the uh your insights and it seems a lot of the uh, 
emphasis was on, quote, they, they do this, they do that, and all that. Let's try to switch gears and talk about who we are, who the Hyperboreans are, how we can access these energies, how we are in control of the situation, and what are the things that we can learn from the past and use them right here in the present moment. Some of the things that can empower ourselves and others, as well as the listening audience of this video. But yeah. uh, we understand all these various conspiracies of this, that, and the other thing, but let's, I think, for the audience listening on these sites, these groups that we have, let's focus on what differentiates us from they, them, and all these negative beings, forces, whatever. Because the truth of it all is the earth intelligence that these people are accessing, and we can access that same energy. And I believe Lily has some experiences of communicating with the earth. And we all know that the Gnostics have also insights and how we can learn from them and then push this into the present moment so we can be empowered and not be in a state of uh, fear and ignorance. For me, I think just a simple act of um, <clears throat> healing the trauma. I mean, for the whole time that I've known Lily and the work that we've done together, for me personally, the point of healing the trauma and getting to a point of trying to be the observer, etc., is a is the way that you clear out enough garbage so that you can activate this DNA. Um, two years ago, I probably wasn't at a point that I could have found you know, some of the answers or information or expand my consciousness or awareness. Um, so the simple act of just healing whatever needs to be healed because each person is different, to me, that puts it more into reality it, because everything that we do on a daily basis, everything that we confront that comes up uh, at any given moment. Um, it's a choice that you make to either walk through it, heal it, um, store it, nurture that, that feeling or whatever, but when you release it all and you move forward, then it allows us <clears throat> to expand and get to the point where we need to be in to, so that we can access this information. Um, That to me is kind of the point of it all. And then um, go ahead. Uh, anybody else wants to join in? I'm kind of thinking here how to put things in a word. But see, I just wanted to add to that because um, it has to do with getting rid of our conditioning. And if, if we didn't have, if we didn't as people, individuals, have one little feeling on, oh, I'm going to question what I was taught. I'm going to question my parents. I'm going to question my religious beliefs. I'm going to question the government system. I'm going to, if we didn't have any of those questions to look at and, and dig into, then that means that we're, we're just like going along with everything and the belief systems. And we're not going to, we're not going to ever um, go home to ourselves and, and find that connection with that um, original template so that's the whole thing is to start on all those little tiny little things that you're you're conditioned and I'm, I know for myself I can only speak for myself but um, you know all the religious programming that I had and the um, belief systems as of being a good Christian wife and everything 
like it, I had to really do a lot of self work and it's taken me my whole life, <laughs> you know, from the age of 30 till, you know, I'm almost 52. So it's like that whole time I've been deprogramming. You know, um, Og, I read something that you wrote earlier today or whatever about how the system destroys even the ability of the person to question um, and um, to even look outside of themselves because it, you know, the, the zombie state of mind. And you have to kind of agree. I mean, when you look around and, and you look at people who are truly aware I'm not going to say awake because there's many people who are awake who are not aware. There is a difference. Um, but the, like Trudy, just like you said, the ability to question, the ability to be creative, um, whether it's art, music, so on and so forth. So you have to, you have to be aware to a point where you can recognize in yourself that which still needs to be taken care of. What, I mean, I, for me personally, I know exactly where my blocks are. You know, um, and <laughs> there's one or two that, you know, I struggle with daily. But I did have to agree with that, that the ability to question or to even look beyond or to learn that's what you said, Dog. even the ability to, to learn, to expand your own awareness, to look for new things, stuff that actually, you know, that you can actually, like it spreads out in the consciousness. That's kind of, um, you know, with some people, it's just a dead issue. I mean, it, it just, just doesn't happen. So. Well, and yeah, that spreading out in the consciousness that um, Og was talking about too, it's like when when you learn this, when you go inside and you clear these programs and you, and you learn, you connect with that, um, um, with that, um, true Akashicness of yourself, <laughs> authenticity. Um, it's like, instead of putting a barrier between other people and yourself, you can fill that in by being more expanded in yourself. So you, instead of creating that, oh no, I'm not going to like the neighbors. I'm not, I'm going to, you know, have the, all these divisions and it just creates separation and friction. So what I've learned within myself is just to kind of just expand it, expand myself. And I can be more of that to fill in that, to create that consciousness. Yes, there's definitely an expansion that I think is part of this original DNA being active and operational, I guess. And, and this is what, you know, we now call in it this original DNA activation, but this is that universal singularity, I guess, that the force behind all of creation right? It is within us. And so once we, you said we learn, and I said we expand in that awareness of the awareness of who we truly are as a creator being. So we expand that. The more we expand, the more our awareness expands, and then we become more whole in our perspective, and so there is no competition in that because this is where I think it's becoming easier. I know that for a while there, it was difficult to, uh, to see the difference between something that was really uh, healing for humanity and something that was trapped because there was a lot of, you know, all this um, copying going on with people you know, and all these programs are rolling out and everything for the restart of the matrix. But then there is this different sort of awakening, the true awakening that's happening, right? And that is on this flow of self-awareness and expansion of this awareness. 
and not so much at you know a new program so our um you know what we talk about even the subject that it is today okay the hyperborea you know it's not uh, uh you know it's not a popular subject let's just you know be honest here it's not a popular subject but we're coming from this perspective and that's why we want to see what does it mean for us as a human being to talk about the subject, what are we revealing here because we're revealing some of the information or that fact that we are connected to that living Akashic record and this is what we are then bringing forth and this is the dots that we're revealing right here. This is what's going on. This is our ancestors. This is the original humans. That's the original human DNA and that's that's what's happening here. So what, how or how does that, and knowing that, how it does affect us as a human being and expression of source creation within a human vehicle? How does that help us to implement correction timeline? Because we now understand there is a reason behind this process that we're going through. This awareness process or, or expanding your self-awareness that brings this correction into a possibility even. Because we have to come up with solutions and change the reality or correct reality. We've been talking about this for a while too. So how does this information help us to implement implement earth correction timeline how does that help us to stand as a warriors so anybody wants to add to that i talked uh, um i talked about this when we were in mexico and we had a little admin chat also about sometimes we ask ourselves is we're creator beings so what do we create what do we want to create? And my thought on that is we have to get to the point and we have to clear out the garbage and access and activate our DNA so that source flows through us. And when you're anchored in your spirit, you're anchored in source, it doesn't even really matter uh, that you have an idea, oh, I'm going to... I want to create this or I'm going to create heaven on earth over here and you know, my neighborhood on the corner or something like that. Sometimes I personally think that if source is flowing through you and it just is emanating from you, that it'll create itself, whatever needs to be done out there. I, I hope that makes sense. It's sort of like, it's sort of like I said the other day that I thought the northern lights were, were not really a reflection of the sun's light or whatever. I actually thought the uh, northern lights or the aurora borealis was actually an expression of source uh, from the planet. And if you picture that, that green light or whatever and how it, you know, comes out, if you kind of picture that radiating out of yourself when you're connected through source, that... That's creation in itself. That in itself is creation. That is what creator beings do. We spread that creative essence out for us. Does that make sense to everybody? Sort of? Yeah? Totally. Totally. Something that I, uh, it came to kind of spontaneously, but in, in discussing with people and trying to interact with them in a productive way, it was like I've been asking them, okay, now if you created life or you know our, our human situation, what what would it be? I mean, would you would you say that if somebody learns more and you know and, and cares 
and um, that they would then advance or, you know, what does it, what, what, if you created that, was that how you would set it up? Or would you say that somebody says, oh, I don't care, you know, what, does that person supposed to advance? Or so how, and that seems to resonate with most people and they go, well, yeah, yeah, if I set it up, I would have people that who are doing work, learning, expanding, they would be moving up, let's say. And then somebody who isn't doing that would be static or, or, or devolving or moving backwards. So they are, they all are, you know, when you, when you get them to actually, okay, well, how would you, you know, if you could create the, it, it all comes back to the, the way everything is, you know, and I think they can see that better. And that just, just happened here fairly recently where I'm just, People are bitching and moaning about whatever. And I just go, okay, well, if you set this up, how would you set it up then? Mm -hmm. You know, if you think it's unfair, mm -hmm. okay, so then let's, mm -hmm. let's walk through this a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it always comes back to the way I think that uh, life works. And so that's what I've been doing lately. So basically, no more victim mentality and creating from that point of view, but being empowered and responsible for your creation. So instead of like what you were saying, Steve, bitching and moaning about stuff, what we do is that what we need to do at each moment. And now, so hopefully this information about our own history as human beings and that we come from wholeness. We come from universal wholeness. Who we are uh, is, is treasure. This universe treasure. That's who true human beings are. And so knowing that and bringing out the subjects and talking about the subject, it should empower us as human beings because we now know even with, you know, what was revealed in Buschetti Mountain. To me, what it revealed and what it confirmed is the greatness and the incredible source intelligence that a human being can express. That's human greatness. That's empowering to humanity. And the fact is that it takes a true human DNA to have access to that that it's not untouchable by the matrix. It's unbreakable, it's unmovable. It's beyond all the trickery that we could experience in this reality. That should empower us to go forth with our creation like there is nothing else can exist but our creation. Because that's how much this information gives confirmation and gives self-empowerment to those that really understand what it means. It's a source confirmation that we are the beings that can implement correction here in this reality. So this is what we need to get to. But of course, this reality, the matrix reality, is not a creator being. So in order for it to exist, it can only exist by manipulating humanity to create the reality that it suits it. And this is why we've been so outspoken about all the means of matrix of trying to propel humanity into same cycles, 
to create a reality again and again that will control humanity. So it's basically this information is coming out, I think, into the public, and that should kind of show, I guess, us it's the test. Is humanity ready to take its true power back? We can't hide this. This is our ancestors. They're powerful beings. And they have access to all that it is. To the history. There is history. Our true history is within our DNA. Because every time I've been ever, since I've been talking publicly, I always say, this information is within me. Anything that I've ever said that might happen or was coming to happen, it was because I pulled that information from within me. From within the, because I'm an earth being right now, right here, and I'm anchor in this body, and I'm source creation, so I have access to that living Akashic record. And so, there's nothing that could be created here on this plane that we don't have access to. So this recognition that we have this original DNA as humanity and that by activating this, by going within and gaining the gnosis that Gnostics are talking about, we activate that DNA, we activate that power within us. And that's huge power. In my view, that's a huge power. It's like you get a whole army of swords behind your back. And we can move forward and implement the correction that we need to do here. And so, but the other reality or the tricked reality, the only way it can work if we believe the lie or the tricks or the direction of the matrix, because it also redirects people to create it's like genetically modifies creation as we go. That's what it does. So then it can exist. We just starve it. And this, to me, the history about hyperboreans and, and uh, you know, everything that comes with it, it's very empowering to humanity. The way I see it, it's very empowering. I wanted to ask you guys with Romanian backgrounds or AUG, um, is, the, um, is the Romanian government, uh, do you think they're ready to release any of this information? I know this is just a basic question, but, or do you think that it's still going to be stifled and not be allowed to come out into the general public? Police, I think you're you're muted, honey. Felicia, you're muted. Okay. So here we go. It's not gonna come to the Romanian government, but this information about the and by the way it's called Buche G Mountains, because I know everybody's struggling with it. So it's Buche G Mountains. Okay. Yeah, and so it's coming through our beloved teachers. It's coming through um, a lot of the, the the generals, a lot of the high power people that look that worked into the secret service. They are already have YouTube videos. All our scientists, all our engineers. But they always tie it back to the Hyperboreans and the Dacia and the Trachi and our, our true ancestors because they want to take the emphasis that 
uh, everything happens from within us and it's all about the awakening of our DNA because that's what it's gonna and the, the DNA, I want to emphasize this, the DNA is awakening on its own. You really don't have to do anything about it. It's, it's doing its job. We're future ready and already coded and ready to go. Yeah? And so, uh, because the human genome is, uh, the template is um, in the Sphinx of Romania. And it's fully activated. Therefore, we are already fully activated. Yeah? The reason the Hyperboreans are called the immortals and us, we are immortal beings, yeah? Especially us at this group that we're talking to each other, we are not going to take this body to the grave, okay? So because there is an interdimensional corridor through the awakening of the DNA that it unveils itself and it's showing itself to, to you, um, on how you, in wholeness of being, without doing anything at all, just being enjoying, like um, uh, laughter and enjoying your sweet little life around you, Even whether it's a meal, a glass of water, the bird in a tree, uh, Gaia is the natural timeline, and it's saying, please, uh, um, aligned to that. Always rem as, uh, reminding us and not make this so complicated because it is a natural pro process. Uh, we have brought it with us. It's already who we are. It's not something that uh, that's to me is old earth to think, oh, we have to do this and we have to do that. It's coming from the leftover fear virus that was introduced to human consciousness. And um, it's actually not even the original timeline. Um, what we're seeing basically in our Western society today is a leftover the, um, of the Atlantean fear virus. They have to play that out among themselves. It really has got nothing to do with us. And they're trying to put it on our plate through religion and through even uh, convincing us that we have to develop compassion and love and that's already we're naturally compassionate and love but they are trying to drag us into their unsolved conflicts that have been going on for thousands and millennia of years that might not have to do anything with us yeah and so um, and, and the, the Hyperboreans, they always teach about shifting. They don't teach about healing the, the wounds because uh, it's not about being a wound and victimhood. It's, um, it's about, be, about being in wholeness of being and then everything around you heals without you just through your own beingness, yeah? So even the healing to me, and the processing on how I get rid of this and get rid of that is mine. That's a lot of mine. It will never end for you if you're going that road, yeah? Because you're still in a matrix and you're trying to heal a matrix. The matrix is a broken program. Why would we even do that? It's broken and it ended. They don't have a timeline. That's why, that's why they went to the Bucheji Mountain in 2003 they figured out they cannot create a blueprint anymore, yeah? So they tried to go there and copy the original timeline and make another program, but our ancestors says there will be a time that, that the time will be no more, meaning linear time that they are trying to do, yeah? The ones that are running all these matrix program for us, for them, not for us, Really, they're really not running it for us. It's an agreement that you can agree to participate or not. Yeah, they know that. They know it's an agreement. It's a contract. Yeah, they're not saying, oh, you have to live uh, to live this. This is a contract in law, even in trust law, natural law is an invitation. Yeah, whether you want to engage your energy in it or not. So the Hyperboreans always say, make sure that you know that this is not your battle. 
because the living being in wholeness of being and in harmony does not battle with anything. It does not participate in that. Yeah? It stays anchors and it knows that the flow of well-being is forever coming through the interdimensional corridor and it resets all the patterns that have any distortions around the living being. So Western society today, the way they teach even um, new DNA, I notice is they teach it from the old energy perspective, from the mind. Yeah? Yep. A lot of people get that everybody's teaching it from the mind. Yeah, then you have to go and work hard and heal and save this one and save that one. And it's like, well, that's old energy. Yeah, and working with your, uh, working with blocks and this and that. It's like, no, the, it's like when you go in a shower, you just shower with well-being, yeah? Shower with the shower of your spirit. And then when, you, when you're done with the shower, you have no blocks. You can look for them. They're not there. So this is what the hyperborea or the, because what you are asking and what I am asking myself is how does this awakening of this new DNA comes into play? That's the question that we're asking here, the basic one. So um, getting sidetracked, yeah? It's just gonna give you more mind headache. It's like, look like a child, you know? It's just so beautiful, it's like, since the DNA awakened, like I've started to feel it in, in full power in 2006, it's more like a child, yeah? And if I get into effort or if I try to solve the problem of the world, I get a headache, I can't even get, get out of the way. <laughs> and I can't even touch that stuff. I get a headache, I go hit, you know, my elbows around the room or I burn my finger. It's like, I can't, I cannot even. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you are just like that because you wouldn't be here talking about that. So we have to leave behind the fear virus and the Atlantean because the wound of Atlantis is what they are rolling out. They've been rolling out and they don't know how to get out of it. That's why the, the, it's called the wound of ISIS, the wound of victimhood and the savior syndrome that's running the matrix and they have, um, uh, you know, um, degrading the feminine aspect as far as Atlantis to such an extent. And now they have to work that with themselves. That's why we have the ISIS energy today. Yeah, it's got nothing to do with us. They're gonna self-destruct through their own programming. Yeah, because they went to the Bucheji mountains and they had access to the dome and all this stuff, but that's just the first hall, the living hall of the libraries. There are thousands, billions of hallways in the living library. That is not a record. That is a living library. It's a, it's a very, very big distinction uh, to go into the Akashic, uh, Akashic records or library or be the living library. Who makes the living libraries? We make the living libraries in the Bucheji mountain. It's not the other way around, yeah? Your beingness is what uh, makes up the living library. So what we're talking uh, here, just to make a distinction, is be between the, uh, the persona, the social engineer persona, and the living being. And in every single moment, you can check yourself. Am I, am I talking about the living being or the persona? And you will know because the living being doesn't have a problem, even with the matrix existing. It couldn't care less, less it's beautiful, it loves it. You know what I mean? It, lo it loves every aspect of the matrix, like a child, yeah? But the persona goes, oh, I have to go fix it, heal it, hate it, fight it. My gosh, we're never gonna end this thing, you know? It's kind of self-destruct on its own, so no worries about that. All right. <laughs> Don't let me so my feeling is that that part of it was uh, the reason why people were able to get in is because they were allowed to. And there's probably a lot of things that we still don't know about that and what it actually did. 
maybe it was all set up that way so they go in and open it at that particular time because maybe it did activate it something I yeah, wanna... The batteries have always been activated. It's not like they've been dormant and they're not there, but they went, they went in there to look for technology. But the living libraries is not for us to enter and create more technology so we can dump all our garbage on humanity. The living libraries have to do on having a direct experience between you and existence and your spirit here on Earth on earth the natural timeline yeah, yeah? yeah. Of your yeah. own beingness and they tried to copy it with technology yeah that's why they went there and they said there's a time where time will be no more you cannot make any more time because it's an illusion and it's a distortion yeah the time space continuum the way we're taught to experience it's a distortion it's not the real timeline yeah because yeah. the real timeline we go like this Mm -hmm. Yeah, in integration, yeah, we integrate all aspects of our being, whether it's your Atlantean uh, uh, aspect, whether, whether it's your, I don't know, your, um, let's see, um, Arcturian ar uh, aspect, yeah, whether it's your aspect that's lost in the matrix, yeah, is the living being through the awakening of the DNA. Is, a, is, a, is calling calling back all the aspects, yeah, to come back. And, and uh, that's why sometimes you think you're still working with the matrix, but you have summon wholeness of being, and then all these aspects are returning back to you. You really don't have to work at it, yeah? Just to be anchored in wholeness of being, and then they will come, but they will feel distorted because they are distorted and then you will think you have to work at it, but they're just returning home because you are home now. You're anchored, yeah? You're anchored and you say, I am not leaving my seat of power. That's it, I made up my mind, yeah? So now they're going, oh, somebody's home, the lights are on, you know, I can come back home and be whole again, yeah? So basically owning your own reality as we use this this uh, uh, words in the past to, to describe what, what you're talking about. You are home. We are home where you anchored. And then if you anchored in your wholeness in here as an expression of source creation, human being right here. And once yeah. you anchor, that's it. You're whole and you own it and, and, and you are the source creation then there is nothing there is no there is no place for a victim field then to do its thing its repetition that it does because that's what in and, and i think this is what you're saying you know that they try to recopy again this timeline and that's why they that's my own personal feeling of what they were trying to do by trying to, um, you know, um, copy and, and back engineer that library, I guess, the living library. Um, but it cannot be copied. It cannot. So then you have this then cheap copies that some people run some of these programs for a new matrix that are so funny at this point so this is very empowering thank you for that it was really really good well, thank the, you. The, the, they only out for technology remember because they have to create artificial portals to to get out of the trap because they lost touch with pure essence of being yeah they're not even beingness in beingness. I don't know what they are. You can, whatever name you want to name them, yeah? Because uh, a living being would not copy reality. Like you are, you want a cheap copy of something? Yeah? <laughs> so how far? But they've created universes after universes after universes on that, and many, many worlds, yeah? But Gaia has split, can split itself into, uh, as many earth right now as there are living beings on it 
and not just the seven plus billion, because we have uh, here beings coming and going and, and through the interdimensional corridor on any given time, yeah? And their perspective about this earth is so totally different than how we have our take on it, yeah? But what I'm getting is that, that through the sentience of Gaia, yeah? She can split and reflect back uh, to as many beings as, as is relevant for them to experience the so-called um, the earth experience, yeah? It's, uh, so everybody, you're, you, where before we had to share one big soup, yeah? Everybody had to agree and we had to love each other and we have to hate each other. It never worked because it's, it's artificial. We tried. It doesn't work because it's not natural. Natural is that, Lily, your earth is your earth. It's beautiful and by invitation only, yeah? By agreement only, I come and co-create. But it's not our earth. That's unnatural, yeah? And so she split herself, really. We released her, you know, we said go, yeah? So she went ahead and split herself, yeah? And billions, trillions of Earth in multidimensionality and simultaneous, simultaneity of being, yeah? And you can call it Gaia, you can call it any way you want it. You can have trees in the rivers, you can have desolated desert, you can invite any beings that you want. So. Step in it because it's your own. It's not the matrix. They have, they have no access to your new earth. Nobody has it. I don't even have it. And even in this group, you know, I don't have it unless right now we are co-creating, yeah? So now we are giving each other permission, yeah? And that's that's the, 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 uh, uh, Hyperboreans are the genetic engineers, they're very good at the genetic engineering and the holding the templates for us, yeah? They don't make the template, you know what I mean? It's like they hold it for us to put in it uh, as we go, yeah? Not like, oh, they're setting there, now we have to put reality into template and then it comes out that way. Like, it's not like that, yeah? It's in every moment living in a here and now, the templates, they, like the other night, I was with them all night, it was beautiful. It was beautiful, they told me to tell you guys, they love you beyond, the beyond, the beyond your conception. And they were so busy because they said, you guys are so busy, we can barely keep up with changing the templates. <laughs> because you speed up, you know, right now, and you're catching up, and and you really know what you're doing. And they were so like excited and it's like magician, you know, like magical, magical. Yeah, like you guys are maverings and we're in awe of you. So I want you guys to know that, that you're doing well. <laughs> Very well. Thank you, Felicia. Yeah. Thank you for that. Okay, do we have anybody else adding more on hyperboreans? That was beautiful. That was I'm very inspired by, by what I heard from Felicia, really. And also from all of you, from Og, from, from you, Lily, from Betsy, through the, uh, the, this thing, this transdimensional corridor that Felicia was, uh, you know, mentioning was actually, is actually our heart. Our heart is the place where a universal energy gets converted to personal energy. And of course, at that point, you know, it gets hijacked with all this, uh, traumatizing and conditioning you know and we we found ourselves in in a position where we are creator beings with the degraded consciousness so to speak you know not realizing that we are actually self-generating the matrix ourselves we are the ones who are actually generating this matrix for us you know whether that is technology that's been set for us or that is technology that we set for us you know it's it's actually moot point but we are the, the ones who are self generating this is the cube, you know, it's an Orion, uh, you know, uh, thing, you know, uh, and this cube and, and every way, and every way in, in which we move, the cube closes on us again because we are self-generating the matrix. So the movement, you know, produces this, uh, you know, um, you know, another, you know, 
appearance of the cube, no matter where we move. You know, and actually, you know, the, the, the thing about um, escaping all of this is through calming <laughs> ourselves down, you know, really non-reacting. And it's easier said than done because every question will generate, I mean, uh, I, I never came to answers to questions because question will energetically bound any answer that you may come to, you know, the, which will then self-generate another cue. You know, the, the thing is to actually drop into neutrality, to drop in the place where the universal meets personal in that tri trans-dimensional corridor, which is our heart, to be neutral there, just to drop all the concepts and to drop because every reaction is unhealed part of us. And if we react to unhealed part of us, we're gonna just perpetrate the, the conditioning that happens in this entry into the personal, you know? Because the entry into personal is the, is the point of trauma. So, uh, you know, it, and we are reacting. That's why, that's why you know, we, we always talked about triggers, shit storms, and so etc. et cetera, et cetera, because you never know when, 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 when trigger is going to come because you, you, you don't know that space beyond personal. You don't even know your personal space, but you definitely don't know that place. So dropping in neutrality and just like, uh, you know, just where universal meets personal, we have to drop into that point. It's maybe zero point or you can call it wherever you want. And that's how you start dissolving this uh, self-generation of the cube or matrix, you know, for each one of us, you know, that's like you and you and you, each one of us is self-generating this different, uh, you know, matrix, you know. Um, so, uh, uh, neutrality is the answer, <laughs> one of the answers. A hyperborea might be metaphor for these like what Felicia said, pure beingness, you know, the, the beings beyond the matrix or beyond the hologram, because Og was saying, Og was mentioning in one of his talks that a holographic construct is um, a containment system. Yes. So it's a containment system. So basically, you know, you cannot, you cannot escape containment system through movement that generates that. So we have to drop into this stillness of observation and really neutrality, you know, energetic neutrality, you know. Well, you can make it a lot simple and just have a good laugh, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> it's hard to, it's hard to, we're passionate beings, you know, we're very passionate, especially us from coming from other countries. I can hardly contain myself, you know, <laughs> I, I light up like fire, you know. And it's like to constantly check on myself, oh, I'm being triggered. So what? It's my passion. You know what I mean? It's like that's <laughs> my passion for life. You can call it anything you want, right? right? But what I'm saying is that naturally, naturally, the matrix is done with. It's done. You know what I mean? It's, it's done with. It cannot run anymore. That's why they went over there to figure out who to, how to prolong it. And they said to them, there will be no more, go home. You know what I mean? That's basically the message, okay? And Yeah, uh, it's like you're done. Oh, oh, you're, oh, you're done. done. You're done. And it's hard to believe for us as humans, as the persona that is done. So we constantly, we go there and we reference and we... And, but whichever way you you can tap into, everybody has their own unique way. Like to me, whatever when I'm triggered is not like, oh, I'm triggered and now I'm going to analyze what. Oh my gosh. It's like, how quick can I get into the flow of well-being, you know? Tell myself a joke, go look, uh, you know, to the children playing out. It's like, how quick can I align? Because through the alignment, I will be shifting back into my own creation. And the Hyperboreans always teach shifting because that's the natural way of being. We shift thousands times per nanosecond. You know, when we started this program, we're not the same beings, yeah? Why do we even talk even about the, 
the beginning of our program. We're just more right now. Yeah? <laughs> We're already more than wow. How much more? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yeah? Since we've been talking to each other. So they always talk to you about shifting because that's the natural way of being. And they always say, how quick can you shift? Not how quick can you figure that out? It's not about figuring out. A child doesn't figure out anything. Nothing. And they get everything. Have you noticed? <laughs> it's like they get everything. <laughs> and they will touch a child like, like that. And then you're in joy of being. And then everything around you will rearrange. And then the, the life of the matrix will be shortened as a result of that naturally. Yeah, because it has to run its course. We can't just take it home. I would love to take it home today, yeah? But it's a plane, it's a realm for these um, 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 civilizations that have been infected with the fear virus that they have to play. It's a, their playground for their wounded victimhood and the savior syndrome. And we cannot take that away from them, yeah? Have to let them play. Although we will take it home. We came here to take it home, right? It's kind of the whole. But we step out of time and then we look at it differently. When you're in wholeness of being, you're not thinking. Right. You know what I mean. I know you guys know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Felicia, it made a lot of sense when you were talking about um, the each one of us is a living library, is, is a living. Um, I was reading... I think it was an account of when Cesar took his friend into the, he was allowed so much time into the Hall of Records. And uh, there was a statement made though that um, for each person that actually went in and would into the Hall of Records themselves, each hologram, each story would be different for every human being that actually viewed the record. And what you were saying today just made that make that makes sense to me now that each person would see something completely different. Yeah, because there's not one earth or one history. Yeah? Mm -hmm. One, one. It's your perspective on the story. Yeah, it's your perspective, it's your, perspective, it's your focus that brings in to bring that particular hologram or beyond the holographic universe, yeah? Because that's where existence is. It's beyond the holograms, yeah? <laughs> I still want to go there. <laughs> what, uh, Romina, I want to go down there. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was thinking to start posting um, um, old, very, very old songs uh, because the vibration, you don't have to understand the language. I get alignment in like two minutes. Because our language and the vows, it's, um, you know, the dynamics of our language is up to 460 vowels per, until it goes into the silent sound, you know, just by speaking the language. And we have to remember that the, the, the Vatican messed up the musical scale in the 16th century, 15, maybe 12, I forget, never mind, yeah? Where they took out the melodious the melodious and the flow that is uh, encoded in uh, um, the, the musical scale, yeah? That which harmonizes then your within yourself, so to take you off your center, so you're always off center. That's why the music was maskless. I have to tell you guys about the chrono, chronovisor, chronovisor, because there is a, I don't know how to translate videos for you because I would, because we have scientists. Our science are study the consciousness of science. It's nothing like uh, academia today, you know, because that's what we are talking about today. Yeah? We're talking about the science of consciousness, of DNA, of consciousness. Yeah? But uh, in, uh, in 11th century, um, a traveler from Genoa, went to Transylvania, where I'm from, okay? And by the way, the Dracula story is the biggest distortion that has one of the 
uh, more indented blueprint of fear that's being put into humanity because it's it got nothing to do with our history. And I wish I could translate to that to you guys because if you listen to the true story of Dracula, you will remove that blueprint from the collective consciousness and how we look at it. Yeah. But anyhow, the, the Genoa, that's why they went to the library. Now they went to uh, Romania many, many times, people from all over the world to do the chronovisor. Yeah. And they went out in a country. Yeah. And they said, oh, you know, we want to invent a, um, a, a machine that we can look in the past, in the future. And the peasants there say, why? Why don't you live in the now? You know, gee, what's wrong with you? It's still going to be in a hologram, no matter how much in the future you're going to go and you're going to know all this stuff, you know. Why do you want it? And I go, no, I want it. I want it because I am an inventor and I think it will be fun. They said, okay, here's the blueprint. Go do it, you know. So they don't care. <laughs> Take it if you want to make a chronovisor, you know. So he went back to Genoa and started doing the, the drawings and actually made the time machine. This is 11th century, true story, from the, com the library of the compendiums, yeah? So Vatican finds out, yeah? <laughs> and comes after the guy and says, well, you know, you're either going to go to Inquisition and you're going to give us the plans, you know? So the inventor figure out, said, I'm dead either way, whether I give him the plan or not. You know, you just don't mess around with the Vatican. So he said, oh, here are the plans. But he took one section and never give it to them. And they're still looking for him because he's not here. He went into multidimensionality of being and like how many centuries now? Nine, they're still looking for him. <laughs> So these are the kind of stories we have. You can just laugh your ass off, you know, <laughs> how funny. It's like, why don't you just want to be here and now, you know, and if you want to have fun, yeah, you can just play with the, with the hologram, but that's not what the universe is all about. So I thought I'd tell you guys that joke. <laughs> yeah. But thank you. Thank you, Felicia. That was very interesting. Anybody else wants to add anything? So this we talked about being the center beings, okay? So now this is a whole different perspective what makes us creator beings and why it is that we've been talking about we are creator beings because we have this ability to go beyond it or like exist or create reality from this original point, right? Anybody want to add to that? What are the other positive things that we can use to empower ourselves with the releasing of this information? Well, give it let it unfold. Some things that Tamarinda Masen said to me, which by the way she's going to have, if you guys want to know about what really happened in Antarctica and North, North Pole, we have a scientist that runs a, a clinic, yeah, in quantum physics, and she's going to have the symposium. She's one of my friends, she can tell you all about, if you're interested, where is Antarctica, where is um, inner Earth, what happened. The whole, I am more about the, the, the new DNA, that's my thing, and the energy, but she's the one, yeah, that knows all this stuff, what actually transpired, and she has the sympo symposium, but she will say things to me, and we said things to each other today, that I will just um, let it unfold because sometimes a year and a half later you just go, oh, you know, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> and you will have more ahas than ever. And uh, and uh, the hype, uh, you will now you're fully connected to the hyperborean, so you will feel their presence. You will know. I know that you will feel them when you you will feel a wholeness of being and you will feel love like you never felt love before. 
So Felicia, Felicia, I just yeah. have a question for you. Tamarine Lemassin, is she the person who is supposed to have a three-day symposium in New York City in August yes. on the inner earth? Yes. So that, that is the symposium you're talking about, or is this something else? That is the symposium on the connection with the, the Nazis and what really happened, you know, after the Nazis, you know, the Nazis really won the war and they went to Agartha, yeah? And so... Uh, because that, I've seen that thing in New York. That, so that, that, is, that is real. Yes, that is the symposium. Maybe some of us will meet there. Um, I don't know, you will know from within whether you, you have been trying to go or not, but the information is going to be downloaded to your DNA because the libraries now are, we are now opening more and more so we can, us and the libraries are merging with the persona, you know, the persona is not so isolated, yeah, we have we are taking the persona aspect back, so because of that, we're opening more. So, you, like I said, you and the library is the living, you are the living library. You are. Yes. Library. <laughs> David, you if are the, you want to go, you, go. Are, you are the genetic engineer of your own DNA because our DNA your DNA, my DNA, is a starship stretching into eternity, yeah? Into infinite being. That's how I think about DNA. When I think of it, it's a beautiful thing. It's a starship. Hey, David, did you want to ask your question or do you want me to ask it for you? You can come, you can unmute and speak, ask for you, okay. David was wondering, um, I was wondering if anyone has thoughts on the whole rhesus negative slash positive debate, which came first, who are the original to this planet from this existing duality among humanity? Anybody wants to take that? Og? <laughs> I can tell you what I was informed of and um... That'd be beautiful, thank you. It takes a, a while to put it together to say that that's what I can confirm, but I really can't confirm because I didn't have a genetic testing device in different, you know, time periods or anything. And we're not, you know, informed of everything. But um, the, it was said the RS negative is from Basque, Spain. And uh, by this explanation, they would not be, I don't think they would be the original, but they have, the most uncorrupted DNA from the experimentation that had gone on. And this is explained as a lack of karma to the point where a person who has a lot of karma basically carries a lot of um, ego baggage and angst, emotional trauma. Yeah, it's opening a person up for manipulation. If uh, It's just kind of like holding on to pain. So if somebody holds on to that and doesn't and refuses to let go and, and advance, you could say they're going to fall for the tricks of society a lot more as well. Uh, in, in a weird way, I don't really, you know, go by any of, of this, but people that do a lot of stuff practice basically what's called, I guess, black magic. And so if a person has a clear heart, then if, it, if they have a clear heart, it bounces, you know, this is what they tell me. I don't, I don't really know how, how this works, that it, it bounces back at the black magician. And then that if a person is, for instance, practicing black magic or whatever you want to call it, which is just a way of saying, you know, you use your mind to hurt people. Um, then say another black magician could hurt them and it, they wouldn't have protection. It, it, whatever, you know, the, the basic idea is that a person with a clear heart, basically that has love for others, if they're not on the level of somebody launching an attack at them, there's some type of protection, like cosmic protection, you know, early Christians before like a lot of corrupted stuff call it the protection of God and, and angels and stuff like that, but it's, it's something to do with DNA and, and harmonization. Kind of like there's a harmonization shield. So apparently the people are it's negative from Basque and that might not be exact as far as now because it's thousands of years later, but when that came about, they were the people who had the least amount of karma and they were targeted because uh, that has an influence on the species. And so then 
anybody that has an influence that's going to clarify, you know, the, the conditioning and the programming, they get targeted because it has a collective effect. Um, like it's transient, like we're all kind of harmonies or harmonics and we're in a big collective harmonic resonance field. And so what one person holds within them is going to transfer into the environment. And so you have to, if you're trying to hold that area down, if it's a prison where people can like sing to each other and break the bars apart, you got to go after all the people that can sing. And so, uh, you know, not to get too, too weird here, but so that was the explanation. But so then that would mean that they were technically later because everyone has been here. And so then, um, and that's where the explanation that they're like aliens or from another planet, which I don't really buy, you know, really any of that. It's a holographic kind of place. We're all within ourselves in our, our higher continuum. And um, that's why you have access points that can go every different way in that the highest technology is within. And it's like what Felicia was saying is they, they use technology because DNA that's harmonized, it can access the natural capacity to transfer the information of a person's consciousness across to other areas. Without that, you, they, you have to use portals. They have to use you know, technology. And so uh, that's the, the explanation that we're given. And that's where the explanation of them being from another location or something like that um, and then as well, that's at the beginning. So that's like at least the beginning of those changes of the arrival or whatever it was. So then it doesn't mean, you know, every person that has that blood type now is absolutely going to be, you know, have less karma than somebody who, who doesn't have that blood type. But when that first appeared on the planet, that was probably how it, how it worked. And it, having less karma means you can access the records, you can access memory much more easily. And therefore you kind of remembered who you were, you, they knew, you know, Stuff like that, and, it, and it, a lot of times stuff is reversed when we're, things are explained. Well, I don't think this is one of them, but so you know, it could be, it could be different, but it, it makes sense, you know, it, you know, versus that they were here because that that would be the reversal, that they were here first, and everyone else, every other blood type came from the alternate that was kind of edited in through these modifications and these kind of uh, these these matrices that were set up. A lot of what Felicia was saying, uh, you know, I, I actually have a lot of stuff written down as a map, but then like different parts that and I kind of skipped over. And she, it, this happens a lot with certain, you know, conversations like this, where somebody who's kind of got a lot of information, they'll start like knocking things off the list to the point where it's like, oh, so long, they're reading my computer screen or something. And so that was, it was kind of weird. So some of the things were like the time control, time limit for the faction is a control faction. I didn't mention that, but she mentioned it that they can't create more blueprints because um, I th either limitations have been placed and their technology to do that has been limited because imagine again, it's harmonies and we're in a collective harmonance for a resonance field. Well, that means also if you put out say, uh, you know, it's like cell phones or something that are influencing reality with, you put out a jammer that stops, you know, it blocks up all the uh, frequencies that a cell phone uses. So now you can't communicate anymore. So if you use, they're using these frequencies to communicate and create an alternate dimension that they then transport themselves and others to, but some higher, you know, group of beings that has a collective, basically a, a lo location, a locale where they can put up all these jammers, they could disable their technology and something like that, some combination of some situation like that, some conclusion where they're not going to be allowed to use the same technology and, um, or as well as the idea that that would mess things up so much farther than it is now that they might, you know, dissolve and that's called stardust return where they kind of become one with the background radiation of the universe. And from their perspective, they go right back to, you know, the full heaven completion realm. But from everyone else in the universe, there's billions of eons of, of experience that they would miss out on because they, they lost out instantly. If you, it would, it's really weird to look at it that way. But, um, and so then there's a whole plan for, that goes into what she was talking about with the, uh, the, the blue, the matrix where it's, completing itself from the Atlantean fear virus to the point where it's an agreement for them to work out their karma by going through the act of watching all their golden age, their thrones, everything just crumble in front of their faces and knowing that they can't do anything about it. And as well, they're allowed because of that whole idea to trick people, like she was saying, to, into thinking that it's our karma that we're working off, that it's you know, we're a sign, sign here at the dotted line and it's like, oh, we're getting punished for all the stuff that we did. When we're the, it has nothing to do with it. They flip it around again. And those people that are doing that, that are, you know, obviously not trying to make use of it are probably going to meet with Stardust Return. And the opposite of that is Starfire Return, which is the activation of the Latin codes. And I, ha I wanted to go into a big spiel on that, but I really don't even know how to go into it that much. And I'm not, you know, interested in stretching it out 
a lot. I, I write a lot on it. There's basically three phases from the unveiling, but as well, there's a harmon of, of a consciousness or more so awareness at this point. There's harmonization, acceleration, and in the moment, and then a charge of presence of self with an intent, like focused intent of, it's actually non-focused intent, meaning you're charging being in the moment, but you're not actually integrating. Well, we're not integrating, but you're not actually engaging and interacting with anything. And that goes to what Vidya, I don't know how to say your name, pronounce it. All, all the hours I could go on about the, it's, you know, you have self-awareness, you have biological consciousness. The self-awareness is what's being aware of what the biological consciousness is processing, kind of like a computer system. So when you're interacting consciously, that's not your self-awareness, that's your body doing work. The, what is being aware of what's being interacted with, that's the actual self-awareness. And the idea is that what's being interacted with and how it's processing in the different varieties of different uh, realms and potentials is different. It's unique to each one. Otherwise, it would be the same universe. Yet, what is watching it, what is being aware of it, that's the self-awareness, and that's similarly present in all the possible realities. And you have access to that. But when we're engaged consciously, we, we, we lose focus of it. It's like a, it's unfocused from the soul level and focused into the ego level, which is the outside versus the inside, at least if it's a, a geometric idea. Um, and so, uh, and then that has to do with the simultaneity of being. That was the first thing that I notice of what Felicia said, I'm kind of like going off here, but it's just kind of how it works. Um, it's also how the expansion tends to happen once one goes into the other and goes. Um, how she said, it's like ovals or circles overlaid. And that's how experience is actually occurring, but we're split up into fragmented consciousness. And it's not really like, a, you know, it's not as tragic, uh, tragic. It's not as uh, tragic as people want to make it out. Like it's, I don't know, the end of the world or something. This is, you know, being unable to comprehend who we really are, that's like the worst thing that could happen. But we're like literally at the end of that period and people are like, oh, you know, there's all, this is what we are, wow. Who would have thought? You know, there's millions of years of experience and it's interdimensional, more so extra-dimensional information technology and being, whereas interdimensional is the people that got to like jump around through these portals and stuff like that. It's kind of more broken. And then, but what video was saying, the, um, all of the, the, the self, the holographic matrix, all this stuff, I have like hours of talk and, and you know, probably like 20, 40 pages that can go on and on. The, there's a few different versions. It's kind of like take what Felicia said and what Vidya said and put them together. You know, make a you know, love child from that <laughs> conceptually. Um, and so high, high emotion Felicia has. She says, you know, blow out all the stuff that's blocking everything with high, high emotion. There's actually, I wanted to say something, there's even showers that actually work as etheric showers that flush out the energy systems. Um, and so like all like the worst type of, you know, somebody was in war of earth, like literally you can just go take a shower in certain, certain areas in these systems and it's like, oh, done. But everybody wants to do it the organic way because you learn more. You, you wouldn't need a shower then for forever. You'd go anywhere and you'd be, you'd, you'd be closer to these types of beings. Um, and so, but in that, so that's one way, one method. And that gets distorted with these, types of like uh, more mystical activations when it's not that complex. There doesn't have to be a ritual to it. It doesn't have to be a process. It's literally the lack of process. And then there's the other version, which is what video was saying, which I also try to represent, which is basically to know, to have awareness of no self, to not, what that breaks down is to, to not move in a system that measures your movement and replicates a holographic environment around you based upon your conscious interaction with it, which sounds kind of, strange but it's just what it is and so in that sense you the the, the main idea and it's really it's, it's interesting to conclude or to to embody and experience this but it's a basic idea is everything that you're doing begs the question of one or another response of one desire of one inclination towards something else that's a program that runs it, and it recreates experience in a temporal manner temporally linear manner so to be present without asking the question, without begging the question of the response that your consciousness then plays out in a feedback cycle with the area that we're in that creates more time and experience is a way to, to get to the point of whatever we're kind of really talking about here with uh, self-awareness increasing or consciousness expansion or finding the true self and uh, the transcendence of the uh, linearity of uh, experience, which is therefore a uh, uh, delinearity or a blocking of a non-local, non-dual experience of self, which is what the self really would be, because you doesn't have boundaries and barriers that the physical uh, self does.
And so it's kind of, you know, I can go on for hours about it, but those two viewpoints there of letting go, freeing up charge, and it goes in that three of harmonization, acceleration, and then stepping into the presence of self, it's the same thing. So, and that's also like what they've been talking about for thousands of years of like basically burning off karma. And that, that's also the stardust return when the shapes continue, the, the geometric shapes that spin and reach like a, a point where they begin to uh, expand and become, you know, light or something like that. The beings that do this, that hold on to the negativity, they rip apart. And that's the stardust return. It's an atomic demolecularization of the person's being on an energetic level. So their consciousness no longer can attribute itself to a body. And it's really not cool. Most people on earth are probably not going to get to the highest level, but there's only a, you literally have to go through all these like weird rituals to get to the point where you can't exist ever again in a body. There's only a few small factions of people that have actually done that and they want it because many things, but mainly there's karmic loopholes. This goes back. I'll like wrap this up. There's karmic loopholes where they've done these things to people and they convince people through these agreements, these unconscious agreements to take the karmic talk karma for them and suffer even though they have nothing wrong to suffer and then that works out their karma in the end though it all comes back because apparently the whole system is watched by higher beings and so once we get to the finish line where now all that karma over thousands of millions of years comes back to them they don't want to experience it they'd rather go and become a space rock you know for the rest of the time that the universe exists and take that route so it's it's a really really weird situation looking at it that way but that's kind of like the basis of it and the the self that is replicated by the system when we engage in it is the false self. It's an imposter, an imitator being. And it basically tries to narrow itself down to being us and from the soul perspective as best as it can, but it can't actually be ourselves. For instance, if you stop interacting with it and you notice it kind of waits for an interaction before playing out again, it's very easy to tell. However, if we continue to, to play on that end, it, it plays itself out endlessly. Um, yeah, it's kind of like all I wanted to say. I kind of went a little, oh, this is what I wanted to say. Excuse me. Felicia was saying, so this is, this is what I heard as well. And as well with the Romanians, the, the government. Um, they weren't given much leeway in this too. They, our military kind of took all the power from them, even though it's like their country. And <laughs> Anyway, but they have backing of the secret societies. And the secret societies had the previous temporal loop. So they were using technology to mind control people and, and just freak them out thinking they're, you know, have power of gods and demons, which they, you know, veritably do if you look at it that way. Um, but, and it's about reactivity as far as biological consciousness running a program and how that's, the program is, is conditioning. It's uh, mind control, psychological manipulation, Pavlonian, you know, learned helplessness. It's all the stuff that they've been doing for thousands of years. That's why people aren't really more awake. But the, uh, she was saying that they, there's no healing because, and this is what I was shown as well, so you have the third dimensional view, we're kind of in a 3.5 dimensional view where you have the notion of time, but it's only relative right around the exact you know, shape that we're in. If you go too far out there, well, you're in your mind now, and your mind is in not the room, it's in four dimensional space, it's an overlay between the three dimensional spaces in a way that we can't access physically. You can only see mentally there. So the four dimensional spaces are those that are connected to the possibilities that are relative here, meaning you could draw a pathway to the four dimensional places from, you could punch them if you will. They're physical. And the reference to the next layer up is fifth dimensional, meaning that there isn't an absolute direct pathway between here and the fifth dimensional pathway, meaning the fifth dimensional pathway is literally like mystical cosmic stuff that you can only dream about, but you can still exist and interact in it because you can do whatever you want because you have the ability to do, you, you have free will. Now, if you don't have the ability or uh, the willingness to do that because you just think, you know, what people write on your paycheck or what your, your idea is in society is that's like who you are, then you're, you're locked out of those five dimensional layers. And that's what, that's how this place is a construct for the mind level. But the idea is if you can access the fifth dimensional layer, you can access realities that are less likely than the ones that are directly outside of the one you're in now. Meaning when so there's a damage event or something like that, they don't heal it they access the reality where they're already healed. They access the reality where the event didn't occur in the same sense. Sounds really weird, really outlandish, but uh, it's part of how this in, uh, extra dimensional technology, and it's not technology, it's at that point, it's mind and DNA, uh, works to the point where there's really no linear movement between place to place. It's using the mind to dream the environment that you're gonna go into. And that goes into, 
as well the uh, self-awareness aspect of how to attain self-awareness and you know what whatever that shift is and um, which is basically that you don't do it physically but you create yourself in in the moment through the uh, the idea or the embodiment of you that is based upon free will to the point where all this programming and reactivity and other beings telling us who we are, which is all it is. If that wasn't there, none of this would be here. We'd all just be doing what we're doing. You don't have to try to do anything, in other words. It's automatic. But when you, you're not allowing that to do it for you, that's more creative and that's actual free will compared to the program running through the person. It's the most creative thing a person can do when the program is trying to run and you know people tell you what to do or just systems and memes and all that stuff is to not listen to it, to ignore it. That's the most creative, maximal thing a person can do. It's kind of like non-action or inaction. And so in doing that, though, there's like this void between what's happening next and what is supposed to happen. And in that moment, that space, that's where we actually have the ability to create. You can do anything. And it's also a lot of people don't actually do anything and just observe all the possibilities and everything then you need kind of comes to you because you can merge in between. That's how you don't have to like get a hammer and build what you're looking for. It comes to you when you allow it to. Everything does. And the last thing is to push away the, the uh, oppression, the ego, the, the false self, the program that runs through the biological consciousness is I have a few videos and, and stuff. It's kind of distorted. I think I want to make this kind of like my, my main focus on what I want to talk about from here. Not like in this thing, but like in life in a way. Um, People have talked about it for a long time, but if you have like a disc and it's like a bunch of dots and each one is the binary consciousness of time from day by day, moment to moment, whatever it is, there's one and then the other that's binary. If you can't get to the all of them if you look ahead or, you know, behind you because it's a circle and it could be expanded to the point where you can't see it. But if you move to the center and look down and hit that acceleration cycle where the pro you, you maintain enough energy and intention looking down to the point where a spin cycle begins or it's already spinning, if you will, it's like a figure skater. She's all the way out here. She's moving slow. She pulls her, her limbs in. There's a guy figure skaters too. So either or, um, and they spin faster. So the same thing happens when you do that with your awareness and you're not slowing down like a propeller being pulled on the outside by all these, these program schematics and stuff like that. And so once that spin cycle occurs, then it expands and you can see the whole thing at once. But when you're seeing the whole thing at once, you're defocused from any one particular place. So what to do that, we have to stop engaging and get to that null point. But in that essence, there's a creativity, a simultaneity of awareness where we kind of become all the possibilities at once. And you know, it's that combination of emotion and detachment. And think about that, that's the basis right there. How could you be so emotional, so expanse, yet detached and attached to nothing at all and focused in not one particular place at any point in time? How could that occur? How could you be a, a laser light that functions like an orb or something, a flashlight, you know, a flashlight? It is impossible. But we can do that because we're in this kind of paradoxical situation. And it's because what is being created as our image of ourselves here is the shadow of the actual being, which is larger than what this dimension can contain. We're, we, the soul cannot be contained within the construct, but our, a little piece of our attention is here and that little piece of attention is being ran to create an image of ourselves here. And it's supposed to be just a journey. It's just a gentle journey, but people took it over, played a bunch of games. And then it is supposed to be like, it's not collapsing. Oh, that's the, I'll say one, one last thing that it's not, we're not supposed to um, fix the system, the matrix, the system. Nobody intends to do that. Absolutely. Nobody wants to, nobody cares. The whole point is that as it dissolves, the actuality of what's been going on, what's actually here, which is, it's really inconceivable. It's like the movies try to depict like, you know, multiple dimensions and realms. And you, you imagine if we have a civilization aspect where we're connected to multiple civilizations all at once. We don't know anything in history that even remotely looks like that. Shambhala or, you know, what is the, uh, the other one? I always mess up the name. Um, it ends in gala. I can't think of the word, but um, Agata. What's that? Agata? Well, that's one of them. It would be Agata. something like that. We only have stories about how that would be, but that's we can't get to that by you know like lawmakers, Congress signs a deal with Antarctica people or whatever. It doesn't work that way. It's just going to happen, and it happens through like she was saying, uh, these codes being released from the DNA because what's actually happening is that we're not being lifted up to this level. We were at that level and they put up all these limiters so they could rule and the limiters are being removed. And it has to do with the moon and frequencies and a bunch of weird stuff in underground technology. 
And so in that sense, you know, with all that I kind of rambled on about, is that you don't really have to do anything, but we have to stop feeding the, the illusion, the imposter, the imitator, and then our self, our being, as we're not putting all this like fluff in our field, it, we overfill. Our, our self and our reality overfills with the soul. And that's just the knowledge, the re uh, remembrance, the memory, and that in itself is that heightened experience where we become larger than the definition of the human, the physical person spitting into linear time in a construct than, you know, anything that could, could match that. It, it, it's like the true definition of a soul, of awareness, is so far beyond that, that we have a word that nobody knows what it means, like whether it's enlightenment or awakening or self-realization, whatever it is that we, we make up to kind of describe how powerful that experience is. But that's just us. That's us seeing ourselves. So, I don't know, I kind of rambled there. I'm going to make that, a, uh, a post yeah, on that's it. That's what the Gnostic, the Gnostics calls that, that knowable, that, that great spirit that would Shangri-La. can't even comprehend, you know, and that's, that's who we are. So we, we become bigger, or, or um, sometimes Gnostics refer to, or that even, you know, in the Bible, it's just something like this, that, you know, you're then part of the world or part of this construct. Uh, I mean, you're in it, but you're not part of it. So you're not part of it because you are then, as a human creator being, you're bigger than it because you're in it, but you're not part of it. Am I getting yeah, another, that right? Yeah, another way is that uh, while we're, time has to be programmed in a way for it to work, it's simulation, all of it happens at once. And so what we do is take a slice of it and go in and experience it in whatever way we think is going to develop our character storyline for the uh, experience or character experience for the storyline that we're trying to build. If you imagine we have a storyline time, okay, what happens when you have, I just wrote a post on this, if you have access to other times and other timelines. Okay, well now you have the storyline of each one, but then you have an extra dimensional storyline where you say, I did this one for a little bit, then I bounced over to this one because I thought that one was you know, too easy. And then I went back to this one, then I went to the other one. There's an extra dimensional storyline. So we're building a storyline beyond. Um, and uh, what did you just say? I, flat, I wiped my memory out again. <laughs> um, the Because uh, I'm thinking about some people are asking questions down there. Uh, you think the Gnostics, the, what'd you say? Oh, that the being part uh, Oh, outside. So when we're outside, we're back with a greater consciousness, or it's not consciousness, it's an awareness. And apparently, when everyone eventually gets there, like, what would we do with our time when we're, we're making time, when we're not experiencing it? And it has to do with the generation of experience from a soul level to the point where we would be interacting with worlds to the degree where people are learning in us, which is kind of a weird way to say it, but... In other words, it's kind of like the Hyperboreans flip roles with us. Maybe they go to a higher level or however that works, but we would be at the center place of some environment, some system, and uh, more or less we have the know-how to extend ourselves into dimensional planes where other beings, basically children of the higher forms, experience life in what we call simulation uh, th through our, our interactions in that way. But at that same sense, we can't interact directly through that. And that's because it would be like you, you're a programmer for a video game, and then you go into the video game to play it. Unless you programmed everything to be exactly like life, it would be boring to you. You would have no point of going in there. Imagine a person who made, you know, Grand Theft Auto going into that. Like at today's world, people would probably enjoy it because you can do the same stupid stuff over and over again. But if you were actually, imagine living there for the rest of their life, they would go insane. They would like try to wait, uh, find a way to end it. And so it's kind of the same sense. But it's much more complex than that to the point where, you know, imagine what a world is beyond the world that we have access to now. But then imagine not like, okay, you're a movie star, you got all the money in the world. Like, no, you can create universes by thinking. So we can't really comprehend what that would equate to from the next level up. But, um, but that apparently is the, the general consensus idea of what happens when we all get there. And I think before that, we go through a period of Earth like an earth civilization where it's called the golden age and, and all that. And there's a false one, which is part of a plan of uh, some military forces where they want to have thousands of years of peace and thousand years of war. And they bounce back and forth through that. But yeah, that's, that's obviously the, the false construct They They have all these, 
they explain like it's over and there are literally other beings that are like we're the ones stopping them we're gonna go in back now and watch they're gonna try and lie to you just you know remember what we said and they have to let everyone play because they have to be given a chance to give up as well these these like elitist and uh and so even they they give up and then they're like but we want to do this and they keep they it's like they can't stop and so they have all these like constructs these inputs these inserts where they want to continue the the system even though it's crumbling and there's no viable way and they have to use people as creators to do that but once people get to the point where they don't want to you know take part in it anymore sign those contracts which is what it is it literally dissolves etherically because they have no they, they use technology to keep it propagated and they use the entrainment of people through their dna to use the creative power to open up the dimensions the alternate dimensions that basically fill the realm with a, an ability to to experience and so that all that is is being closed off and the main thing is they said that they're afraid because they know once people get all their power back they think they're going to get all like beat up and hanged and, and stuff like that and there was a lot of negotiation so that doesn't happen to the point where they get their chance to learn because the alternative is that they become stardust and that's literally like going into the battery bank for a universe where they just stay there they can't fit into a body again um and nobody wants that but some of them don't stop and so they know that it's like it's, it's, like, it's like a sickness they were they're, they're claiming like yeah i want to do this i want to keep going on it's like they don't want that they don't really even though i said that before that they they want it but they don't really want it nobody wants that and it's a sickness it's a complete insanity on multiple levels but um the other thing is that uh i kind of went way off kilter there but the uh, the dna um in the uh the living library as uh, Felicia calls it, they are, like I said before, it's a civilization collective consciousness recording. And that's literally what it like feels like, what it is. It's, um, it's how it's referred to. If you're an expert on this, you wouldn't you know, show somebody a computer and be like, hey, this little guy is like 18 years old. He, he likes this, that, and the other. Like, no, but these computer systems, yes. It's like, this is a civilization's soul memory, not even soul memory, but the, their consciousness memory in these systems, is comp in other words, the computer system learns, and it's like a living, you know, being, if you will. And uh, it gets really weird from here on if we're going to keep talking on that as far as, you know, this is our time to access those fields, and our DNA is, it's, that's the main thing I want to say is that you would think, and uh, last thing is that the children, they use children to open the gates, these, these darker factions, because they couldn't do it themselves. And the new children wouldn't be able to, tr you know, they'd be tricked easily and, you know, the child's not going to be like, well, why can't you know you do it? It's like, oh, we need you to do it. You're better. And it's like, well, clearly that's because you're evil and you want to blow everything up. You know, it doesn't like, oh, I just I forgot my past. You know, but no, the kids don't know. Um, and so, you know, it gets a weird uh, interplay of like, so did we come from the computers? And these are living computers, not like the supercomputers that they built because they made re replica versions that can't go anywhere and they entered into them and that's their their hive mind trap because that can't leave the universe. But, um, or did the computers, you know, come from us and it's an interplay, but it's the awareness that is first before all of it. And it exists outside of this entire dimension. And so the people is, it's like, it's like a mirror, you know, people are a reflection, but, but the me, it, it means the one with free will. And so we being here, we have the ability to make changes. We can guide the realm. We can access the information from the, the mainframe and all that, uh, you know, the computers, they set up programs, if you will, there's, there's time scales where we have for, for achievements, but we're the ones that are, we're like the, the maestros, if you will, that's the, the sheet music, the, the blueprint that we're playing to, but we can choose to, to do whatever we want. But it's really weird because we're, we're running the DNA that's being operated through these inter, not interdimensional, because it's like a bad word, but basically extra dimensional computer systems. And so, but again, it's not like a computer system like they built. They built these zero point energy generator computer systems that are living, but they're, they're inorganic consciousness and they don't carry the trifecta emotional charge for human DNA. So it's like a cyborg vampire thing, which is really weird. Yes. That's all I had to, to say, had to rant about. We, uh, as a, we as a, as a uh, living technology then have this trinary field that you talk about. And so now um, I want to bring this back to sort of to tie it in to, to how this information about Hyperborea and who they, who they are and what it has to do with us right now, because I think Agu touched 
on, a, on one very important point is that how it affects us and what we and how we use this information to do what it is that we need to do here. I think at this point and for for um, for uh, all of the listeners here, you guys are pretty aware of um, you know that we are creator beings and you're aware of your powers as creator beings. So how do we move forward in creating the correction or or doing what we need to do? Mm-hmm. Because I think this is very important point right now because right now we are at this crossroads to where humanity, uh, you know, all of this, the real awakening is happening for a one very good reason. So what is that reason, what you guys want to add to that, and how we can use this or, or how we can utilize an information like this so we can implement correction? Can I just do something without rambling real quick? That everything we're doing reflects into the higher dimensional areas. I know I talk about a lot of the dark stuff, but that's, you know, just how it plays out. The, the rituals and stuff they perform reflects into the higher dimensional areas, and then these entities come back that are vampiric consciousness beings. We're doing the same thing. We're just not all gathering together in big rituals of happiness and selflessness and, and you know, joy, you know, non-binary uh, expressions. So our... Ex- our higher dimensional beings are kind of like waiting. They're waiting for the invitation into our realm. So that's part of the imagining, the creating, the connecting with the four or five dimensional existence. Um, and it's to the point where every line that we say, every reaction to a person, everything that we do, there's a splay of varieties of multidimensional aspects that raise and lower in our uh, self-awareness. So when we're aware of that and we're doing basically having mindfulness of the most basically seeing how we interact with others from the other person's perspective and choosing the highest potential of that where we're most aware and most in control, meaning we're not allowing programs to run and we're not choosing the least creative, you know, reactory animalistic response, but the most creative, most empowered one, we're blending, we're shooting out the bio emission energy and it actually starves those beast systems, the starves those entities that people have talked about and it begins to create that. And when we do that, you know, if you do that for yourself, by the time you know you're done the process, you go to you probably pass through the gate. Okay, that's one of the ways it's called. It's a narrow path. There's a, a little cyclone area people go through. And anyway, but if we do that as a species, which is or a civilization, which is what this time is supposed to be about, our whole civilization makes this this phenomenal shift. It has to do with just respect. You know, everything that we're doing, we we live in respect to everything else, and that gives itself out to the universe and reflects back to us. Yes, and, and one thing, and you, you said uh, something that, you know, it's vampiric. And that's the thing, and you will notice, I'm noticing that, that it does need an invitation or a consent. And so that's what a lot of times what we see is other people are just out there getting humanity's consent for a certain reality, you know, because in, and I think Oggs talks about this really um, extensively is, is that, and especially right now for installing new matrix, they have to get consent because if they get enough consent from people to create that or entrain them into that reality, then it can be created because this is how reality gets created. And so with this information, who we truly are as a human beings, that we have the ability and capability to activate, I guess I'm going to use that word, activate this original human DNA that is the creator being. Okay? And if we have that ability, then we are, it's up to us, so it's our will. So imagine when you're aware of that, that you are a creative being, then you can clearly see when there is manipulations going on to where there is a projected reality that is happening. And all you need to do is accept that reality. And this is how you give consent 
to that reality. And then so then it can take place. And there is a lot of this happening with a lot of people where they're entrained through this hive mind programming to trip humanity up into repeating this victim, victimizer game again. Okay? And so by having the understanding who we truly are, then this is what I think we were talking about here, that you understand that you hold your own karma in the now moment and you can release it instantly. Like Felicia was saying, there is no need to go through all this process. You can just boom and you're done. It's your awareness of who you are as a source creator being. That's what does it. That's what gives you power. You know, I just want to touch lightly upon that and upon what Og mentioned about the elites, you know, fearing that they will really experience some kind of horrible land and, you know, they will be hanged or, you know, killed or whatever. These are actually just energetic echoes of, the, the, of these scenarios that, that, that have been already played from Atlantean times, like Felish said, or from French Revolution. I mean, these things already happened. They didn't work. You know, we, we know historically, even historically, I mean, even from the point of the official history, you know, that is known to us, it didn't work because it's just energetic echo of these, you know, traps, energetic traps that, you know, and they like by, you know, and it's, it is constantly put into our, into, into the matrix, so to speak, because we, we feel these things energetically, we feel obliged to react to them again. It is this reaction because how many times did I make my own list of, like that character, Arya Stark from, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Game of Thrones, of the list of the <laughs> people that, you know, is go are going to experience my vengeance <laughs> when time comes, you know, in the loops of space and time, you know. And then finally, because it is so energetically alluring, it is seductive, this energy, you know, has this charge that is seductive, like pulling us. But these are now energetic echoes, and the, the way to actually is to really to disengage, like Felicia said, this is not, it's not really our story, you know. Um, and then how do we create? Uh, we, we actually create by, we first have to decondition from this, you know, to start feeling this transdimensional corridor, you know, that, that is going to us more, you know, and then uh, just to, you know, create by not doing anything, because creation is not doing. Creation is um, something else, but it's definitely not doing, you know. So we are creator beings, we don't have to do anything, you know. Um, you know. It's important to know because always, you know, you can get carried and frustrated. Like, oh, I'm creator being. What am I creating? My life is miserable, you know. <laughs> Feel guilty. <laughs> but that's the thing. That's the thing, though. Uh, uh, you, you um, being a creator being comes with responsibility. You know, you can't walk around, I'm a creator being and be in, you know, in the blame game and be in a, in a victim game. It just doesn't match. It doesn't make any sense. I've seen people try to talk that way. Hmm. You know, I've seen people talking, you know, about being warriors while all this, they're standing in victim field and keep perpetuating that same energy. I've seen it all. You know, there's a lot of different programs that people will run because, you know, they just get the new content, but then, you know, it's the same blueprint. It's in the victim field. And so I think um, it takes a lot for an individual to accept the responsibility of creator being. Actually, and that's how we move through this hologram, you know, through accepting more and more responsibility for our creation. Whereas the previous state still exists somewhere, you know. It's not that like, you know, oh, 
the matrix will dissolve. It, it is energetic states, you know, like billions of energetic states are stuck together, you know, simultaneously. But now we are moving, um, actually, you know, and it's amazing, like even through this talk, you know, it was very, very unexpected and uh, amazing, wonderful things like, you know, uh, phenomenal uh, sharing. I mean, uh, you know, that's uh, the, the movement without movement, you know, m movement without, what, what the dog said, it's like non-personal intention. It is, it's very interesting concept. I mean, a, a Og is driving Ferrari. I love Og's Ferrari, man, you know, but it's going like 270 miles per hour. And, uh, but I love it. I love it. I, I, I uh, you know, and sometimes I had to listen to it like two or three times, but it's amazing. Well, talking about um, uh, uh, wholeness of being, and we're done doing because you call yourself forth into being. That's you've done. You've done that. Okay, you call forth yourself into being. Yeah, when you had that, oh, I am. Yeah? So we're done doing and a lot of people say well you're not doing anything it's like no i'm actually extremely efficient i can't believe it i mean i can't <laughs> believe it. there is no way five years ago or ten years ago i could do things i'm basically very very lazy most of the time in beingness just resting pure rest absolute and then uh, it's like uh, when it comes to doing it's inspired action yeah it's like from the joy of being. And then it emerges from that. And then it's very, very beautiful. And, but I have to totally surrender. I have to get out of the way and let it take its course. And just, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm only here for the joy of being. Just joy, enjoy the ride, yeah? Because when the desire arrives, my creation is done, right? Because with, it's when I get it, yeah, whatever that is, it fills me up. So I am done because I have already called it forth into being. Yeah? And then so now I just enjoy the ride. But it takes, I think it takes um, living like a child, totally in the here and now and not make any references whatsoever to the linear time. Yeah, because that is a trap, because naturally we do not experience life in the time-space continuum. That is not how existence, um, how we experience existence, yeah? And you guys have inspired me so much. This is what I wrote <laughs> from all of you. They say, they say, because you all come to being in the now and... Um, uh, like you said, you know, don't um, try to disengage, try to take your focus away, uh, shift into neutrals, yeah? Uh, don't, uh, don't involve your energy in, uh, in the battles that don't belong to you, right? Fight your own battles. Next thing you know, you, you're find, gonna find out you don't have any. You just period don't have any battles. It's an illusion, yeah? Because creation is not, creation is very harmonious. It doesn't happen by going against something, yeah? There's it's no friction. There's no friction. So what I wrote is this. The now in all of creation is perfectly still and it exists. And all you do is you go to a particular now to view it. So you just shift your perspective and then the time-space continuum becomes a container for you to have a certain experience from a different perspective, yeah? But it comes from the stillness. The stillness is all that is. Where would it go? It's all that is, yeah, it's still. That, that, is, that is an act of consciousness uh, that uh, viewing, seeing the warrior is one who does not fight but is standing still. So the spiritual warrior is in perfect stillness. 
And the whole battle thing comes from disempowerment and fragmentation, you know, in which we are drawn. And the moment we start disengaging from that, we, we do it thanks to the act of consciousness, you know. And that is that every time when I experience this amazing, um, you know, enthusiasm from the inside, that was due to some act of consciousness, not due to emotional uh, experience, so to speak, you know but due to this act of consciousness that, that is connecting to this trans-dimensional, impersonal wholeness, you know, the, the you know, universal uh, being, you know. So that, that is, that is uh, the, the moment you make something conscious, that, that can work, it can be anything, you know. But the, by, by, doing, by doing that, by, by, with that magic that happens, you, you become whole in that moment, you know. I mean, the, I don't know if, if it's like, if it's a, some mundane um, uh, example, it would be like if you go to, let's say, Western medicine doctor, you have some problems, you have some problems, and you go on the, the spiral, spiral, you know, like whatever, pharmacological purgatory or whatever, and then you just, at a certain point, you just decide to, to actually, to just drop that, and, and uh, you know, to connect to some wholeness in the nature, you know, that is the mystery, that, but that's that act of consciousness, you know. I don't know how it comes, and I don't even know how to verbalize that. It's not the doing. It is not volition. It is not plan. You know, it's not nothing that comes from mind, you know. That's why the Hyperborean says, be anchored, in the, be anchored in the ground of being. Yeah, I don't think it's not activism. I learned that. I was a very active uh, shareholder for a period of time, for like a 10-year period. I spent oh, hundreds and hundreds, maybe over a thousand hours on, it was my employer so I had, you know, a bunch of friends, labor, you know, was getting beat up by these corporations and our customer group and the, uh, the even the shareholder group. And of course the, the management elite, you know, that, so it's not activism that, I mean, I, I learned that um, it was an interesting experience, but it like didn't make a dent esoterically. Well, like uh, it is hard to hard to describe, but um, there's there is a way that you have an effect. Uh, but I learned that it, it's what's maybe more important is is to to care and try to do the best job you can do in the moment. You know, in in whatever you're doing that probably has more effect than organizing a big activism movement, which I did um, for a long time. Uh, so uh, uh, in terms of trying to move this thing forward, uh, all I can suggest uh, again is it's somehow, there's like an autopilot thing that, that takes you over and, and, and again, I'm, I'm, um, sometimes I say things to people and it just like, I didn't even think it before it comes out. And I, and I hope it's, I mean, I know it's in a loving, compassionate perspective and, and hopefully it's, it's not necessarily just healing, but, you know, letting people know that, that there is this caring, loving energy that goes through everything and maybe you know i'm learning that that's that's just as as, as important as anything i mean yeah so many it's amazing because we don't have a memory I mean, memory is just emotional construct. It's like we we connect with with the, with emotional charge through memory, while we think it's some kind of linearity. 
But what is really going on is this, this, these energy charges. So, um, um, we, we, it's like, you know, through the soul construct, the consciousness gets converted to some kind of commodity, you know, and, you know, so it, it's kind of, you know, um, I, I always, it always bothered me why we don't have memory, you know, I mean, memory of who we are, you know, and everything works through this, it works through this energetic charges in us and through us, you know. I don't even know why I said that, but you know, something what you said, Steve, um, reminded me. Well, the, the emotional charge and the thoughts, you really don't need memory or thoughts or emotions because they are the emotional charge that runs the physical body and, uh, and it actually gives you a lot of adrenaline, which you really don't need because it's very bad for your, for your system. <laughs> And that is um, in the gnosis, yeah, and then the knowingness, uh, um, it's, uh, it creates the shadow of knowledge. And I think Odd talked about that instead of having the real knowingness. Now, now through interpreting your thoughts and your emotions and getting involved with the, that energy field, the energy signature, yeah, because we're energy beings. So we run with our focus. And um, so that creates and it takes, um, it uh, rigs, yeah, the original, it never, it never rigs the original self, but it distorts the original perception that we have in any given moment, yeah, because the knowingness is beyond emotions and thoughts. And that's where the control happens, yeah, because the control happens in the fourth realm is the realm of um, the thoughts and the emotions. And that's where so-called the, the um, social engineer persona gets harvested for energy, yeah, because uh, um, the controllers, they know that, that we run with our, after our emotions and after our our thoughts and we, it's a basically mistaken identity. Yeah, it's one of our sacred cows. We all worship something. Yeah, whether it's a, whether it's, whether it's an ideology, whether it's your emotions that you're, in, you're involved with, yeah? Where knowingness is, it takes it, it's not that it, it um, ignores it, but it takes it that it integrates it, yeah? It integrates it, it takes the emotions and the thoughts and it puts it into a broader perspective and that's what I call knowingness. Yeah, you know, because I think uh, the, whole mem the, the whole thing about memory is actually is telling us that we are not material beings, that we are energy beings. And we had some chat in our uh, uh, admin chat, you know, and you know, the, the whole thing is like, I vividly remember many moments with my beloved Nana that uh, died, I mean, deceased for many, many years. Why? Because they were so loving moments. You know, I remember her face. I remember her expression, her dear words. You know, I remember her love. Whereas on, on some other moments, I don't remember years of my life. You know, I don't remember like, what was I doing between that and that year? You know, it was all like a blur. You know, because then you, you understand that reality is not what we think it is. It is really because we are energy beings. And you know, it all just come to us and through us, but because of the whole conditioning, we just create this ego that was telling us, oh, we are this and that. We have linear memory, we have like, you know, cradle to grave package. But it's really, we are energy beings. We are energy beings and then, you know, the reality is not reality, the reality is dream, you know. And then maybe imagination becomes the biggest weapon that we, we may have in this, uh, you know, uh, from this point of co relative consciousness. Because then imagination allows us to, to move energetically, you know, past conditioning or past what we think we are, you know, n not knowing that we are energy beings. And that's why the whole memory thing is like mind construct. Uh, you know, the memory, as you said, Felicia, you know, it, it comes to us to the dimensional highways is unlocking in us 
So we have at this moment what we need to function, operate, move, you know, or, you know, just like fluidly exist. Um, so it's, it's, that's why they say it's a dream. It's a dream. Because, you know, and another thing, okay, so we have to sleep. We have to sleep, which tells you that we are not in our natural state of being, so to, to speak. So in sleep, we have, we have to go to the, the surface to reach. It's like we are in this body, we are diving, we are deep diving. So this body is like this, uh, you, know, uh, the, the, you know, the oxygen bottles or something, you know, the, the scaphander, you know. And then, but we have to go back in, in, the, in the sleep to, to our natural environment to recharge there because you can't spend whole time here you know, because it is not your natural environment. That's why all beings that, that are not all beings, but, you know, uh, you know, uh, humans and many animals, we, we sleep, you know. Um, you know, it's, it's recharge in our, in our energetic um, home, you know. That's why when you take a rest from thinking, that's where you go and then you don't sleep anymore. Because the sleep is for the mind to rest. It's not for the being. The being doesn't need sleep. And that's why the, through the awakening of the DNA and the interdimensional corridor, the, um, the body becomes living technology and becomes the, the, the immortal one. That's why I said we are not taking this body to the grave, at least not in this circle that I'm talking to you guys. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazing. <laughs> I, sometimes I get it, I totally get it. And then I have like, like really? Because to me, that's why I think we're amazing beings because we came here to open uh, portals to new realities. We did not come to regurgitate what is. And that's, I think, we can agree, and a lot of people are talking about what is the, sort of the signs or what are we doing here is this is what, Felicia, you're saying. We're here to create new. Maybe it's not completely new because we are the creator beings, but it's definitely um, something that, that we sort of had to work through on a moment to moment base, right? So if we want to call that a new creation, yeah, then that's what it is. But we're creating also through this um, will, the universal will now, because we're anchored in this um, what a universal humanity DNA if that's what's acted so we're anchored now in that will as well so that being active I mean that gives us so much more power to act than as creative beings right yes <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you guys, we've been at it for more than two hours, two and a half hours. So do we want to continue talking? Do we want to close up? Anybody wants to add anything that's important to this subject? If not, we're going to have to do this again <laughs> in a few weeks and keep having these dialogues and see, you know, this is great. I love every minute of it. I can go on for another two hours, so... <laughs> What do you uh, say? Well, you go ahead. Yeah. No, I just wanted to say thank you so much, everyone who was in this chat. It was uh, absolutely amazing. The energy was absolutely amazing. Um, I'm so grateful for this experience. I mean, you guys rock. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank everybody, too. It was kind of blissing out over there. Um, over here, I still am. Um, I just want to say, last thing is the connection to children having the access to basically all all creation. It's kind of like we have to actually go back to that kind of that freedom to experience 
Um, and as well, it's like humanity is doing that as a whole to the point where we're going to go back to a place where humanity was freer, if you will, of mind, but we have all this power and, and, and uh, more so basically the ability to discern, which you really can't get, you can't buy it, you can't get it any other way. And, um, and then what Vidya said about uh, a coming to knowing, but there's no way to describe or define it, it's kind of, um, it's, it's like the epiphany, I can't, I can't even find the word on this map that I, I was using. But uh, it's basically a way to build to that is that throughout all those situations where we have interactions, decisions, choices that we make, or we're faced with the option to react or go out from our center, is that every time we remain in the center point and ego is kind of like the portion or the slice versus the whole, every time we remain in the center towards the whole, we're adding to that what builds up eventually to a full coming to a realization, coming to awareness of what is, of what we are, of what the situation is. And basically that's an aggregation cycle that we're all going through this aggregation cycle where it's adding and adding and adding and accumulating something that's immaterial. And you know, how do you accumulate something that's immaterial until you get to a point where there's a whole, it's just our perspective changes. We go through so many uh, cycles of that that our perspective eventually changes and there is an overall shift in our perspective of everything including ourselves and so if we the whole point is just to remember that every day it's really all it is to, and again if somebody was completely liberated and people threw eggs at them and insults and stuff like that and it was like oh you're just having a bad day and they were fine with it they wouldn't even have to remember to do this they would already just be there they would just be doing it it's automatic but um and so we really don't even have to remember to do anything it's just automatic but, um, you know, it's however you want to, you know, uh, play it out. And again, the other part of that is that the one, like Felicia is saying, I don't really, it's basically all wars, all battles are someone else's battles that they got that person to, to fall in line with and believe that they, they have something to do with that. And so nobody, there's no such thing. And then on top of that, with that in line, because it's kind of like a paradox and everything is kind of like a paradox, um, is that the whole fighting, the whole situation is, is, what we're told and what people are saying, and I'm not saying it because people are saying it, it's just what everybody seems to be saying, and what everybody seems to be told and a lot of people are feeling, is that all of that is over to the point of basically this mass uh, ritualization of abuse is, is over and that uh, it, it doesn't work anymore. And so the whole like looking forward to like this something that's gonna happen that's gonna like, I don't know, be very difficult. The general consensus idea uh, agreement is that the worst is behind us. And, you know, I'm, maybe that doesn't mean that there won't be, you know, the regular economic issues that are leading up to when people have that aggregation of realizing, oh, that's a fraud. We don't have to pay into that anymore. We don't have to pay attention to that anymore. Because um, hey, that's the other main thing is that nobody really snaps their fingers and then it's all just changed overnight. That would be shocking. That would be really strange. However, over a period of, you know, weeks to months to minimal, you know, years, very fast change, that seems uh, a way of how things are rolled out to the point where we have control and we guide the change. And as well, we ride this expansion, this experience, basically what you're talking about, Vidya, is there's a logarithmic uh, increase, which goes logistically uh, and uh, linearly through numbers that can be explained as whole numbers. And then there's a point where the cycles hit an exponential growth curve and numbers no longer can explain what's uh, happening. That experience mathematical expansion in the mind is a coming of, of self-realization. It's an epiphany. It's, it's, there's, it's the no, state of no mind coming into presence and there's no way to describe or define it consciously. It's an expansion of self-awareness. That's a spontaneous kind of like an explosion that occurs and all of that ties together into what's happening now and what we're doing individually and what's happening collectively and what happens in the past and all the really powerful technology and, you know, ability for ourselves to know and, it's all connected. And I, again, I really uh, enjoyed the, the chat. I usually enjoy these chats. I usually, you know, I, I have the discernment to not really get too, into too many chats where I don't enjoy it, but this is um, very powerful. It's almost like energy is coming out through the whole, the monitor and the everybody's faces. So thank you. Thank you for being in, uh, here, Ag, and for contributing. I mean, this is, uh, this has been beautiful. Um, and and that's what you know even you said it in the last couple of days joy is the mark of the creator you know we follow joy and and that's what makes all this fun and uh when we can laugh 
about some of the things because um, none of it has been really smooth, <laughs> you know, but it's been a lot of fun. It's because we, we have been able to, you know, have a few laughs at, you know, at ourselves and, and things that, that at our own belief systems and let's just keep this fun. And, and I'm really loving these talks as well because they're really expanding my perception on reality as well. So thank you everyone for being here. I really enjoy this too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, are we done? Okay, bye everybody. I love you all. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. bye.